What's going on, guys? This episode is brought to you by True Classic Tees, the best t-shirts on the market. And if you go to trueclassictees.com forward slash RBP, you get 25% off your order. I'm telling you guys, these shirts, this one especially, is my favorite. The color, the fit, the way it stays fitting like this after like an hour or so, two hours, three hours, four hours, is awesome. Very comfortable. They stay form-fitted, which is nice. They don't get all loose. And Wrinkly, I'm going to show you guys what trueclassictees.com has to offer. This is the website, and they have it all. So if you go to shop all, you can see here they have T-shirts. They got crew necks. They got collared shirts. They have long sleeve shirts. They have boxers. They literally have anything you could want in the material. They got some baseball tees here too. Nice. The material's absolutely awesome like this feels so good and the best part about it is it stays fitted properly it doesn't get all loose and gross and baggy so even if you want to wear it out to dinner if you want to wear it to a casual setting you're going to feel like you're wearing something relatively nice guys get to trueclassics.com forward slash rvp and get 25 percent off your order and get the best line of clothing you can get What's going on, man? It just, uh, are we going to talk about bodybuilding at all? Or do you want to talk about everything but bodybuilding? Mm, you already did the wrap up on the on order, don't you, right? Well, I didn't know I was supposed to include you. Well, I won, so fuck you. <laughs> you did win. And people keep giving Paul credit. Why? I don't know. I got to find, did I delete that fucking thing already? Let me see. That's right. I'm on, I'm on the I'm on the periphery. Is there no one else? Where's James? Is James coming on? Is just us two? We find find some of it. No, I think James is coming on. He's just late because I think we got the times mixed up again. Uh. <laughs> um. So this was uh I don't know who won because I won. No, no, wait a minute. Because you have more right. You have one, two, three, four, five. He has. You both have five. And he's, but he's got the top two, but you have more in the top five. So, the top five, the top five, I'm the most accurate. Yeah. Cause he had Andrew in fifth. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. Definitely... And I, I was only, I was only a switch away from perfect. Yeah. 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 I would, if I had to say, I would say that you won. When, when, he... when Paul comes on, I'll tell Paul he won. Why are you going to do that? I'm just joking. <laughs> no, you you seem like you have the closest to to right. So apparently, uh, guy has none right. So, oh yeah, the guy's <laughs> way off. He had sh he had Samson in third. He had Andrew in fourth. Andrew. He's not way off, really. If he just the, this is still the top five. The top he, four, he's top definitely four. way off. Not he really. In, he had Kamal in last. He had Akeem in eighth. Patch no, but, no, but I mean, wheel. but these are the top four. In the complete wrong order. Yeah, but I'm thinking like if you look at Ian. He, he didn't get a single four. one right. Uh, yeah, yeah, wait, guy didn't get a single one right. No. And neither did Ian in the top. Oh, no, he got fifth. He got, he Sean. got Sean. He got Sean. And yeah, Justin, so he's Justin, Justin had. Uh... Oh, he's way off too. He had Andrew in sixth. <laughs> oh. The back of the pack saved him. Yeah, I gotta uh, say, uh, I'm gonna say this like because I was the public forum now, but I have to say I put I put a post up yesterday. that said it was the three men, but I'm gonna give credit to. I'm just gonna give a little shout out, like Nick Walker, Andrew Samson, Milos Asito, Jansen, nailed it. That as a as a bodybuilding fan to watch that show that they put on, and obviously like. <clears throat> The promoters and whatever, but those three to turn up the way they did, and I was talking to some guy at the expo the next day. And he's like, "Oh, this is my first ever bodybuilding show," and I was like, uh, "Well, kid, that was pretty spectacular. Like that, that will probably go down in history." And the yeah. way Nick, like, like Nick, was nailed down, and I don't think I know a better bodybuilder 
on earth as I think he's the, the most disciplined bodybuilder currently competing right now. You know what I really like about Nick and, and Samson has a little bit of this and Andrew, Andrew had his own flair, but mm-hmm. Nick's Nick's confidence on stage is like almost infectious. You look at it and you're I, like, I hope he doesn't lose it. Cause I've seen some things saying, Oh, he, you know, he said he, he was, he had his confidence not, which I can understand to a point, but I hope he doesn't let that, derail him on stage or, or tone him down because when he's on stage it's almost like you know a kukla used to come out and, and pop a crowd and we just bring some energy nick nick fills a room i don't energy. think i don't think nick's i don't think that's ever going to go away i hope it doesn't it's good to see no man it's... i think i think when he walks out he because the crowd loves him so i think you know mm. i've been up there like when the crowd is loud you can you, your confidence is much higher, and as soon as Nick walks out, the crowd's already. He, he, he's already walking out with a pretty high confidence. That's knowing that's, Nick, like he's already going out pretty. No, I know, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, he's walking out with that confidence. But then when he hears the crowd, that just gets oh. elevated. Yeah, so. yeah, he's fun to watch, man, on stage. I'm telling, like, I have to tip my hat to him. I know Samson won, but damn, Nick did everything. He, I, he did everything he could Let have me, done. Let me ask you this. Uh, I'm I'm gonna just play devil's advocate for a second. Matt Jansen is always perfect, like, or I don't want to say always, but he's pretty. He's, he's pretty known, on. He's consistently he's, on. Yeah, he's known as as pretty fucking consistent. Like his guys are always peaked yeah. per- perfectly. But a lot of people said they liked Nick's look better at the Olympia because he was fuller but still just as conditioned or maybe not, maybe not just as conditioned, but still really conditioned. I think he was harder here. No, no, I agree. I agree. I said, I said, maybe not just as conditioned, but you got to admit his Olympia condition was still fucking bang on. The problem I have, the problem I have with the Olympia, it's not fair is I was stood backstage. Oh, so you saw it differently. Yeah. I didn't see him pose other than on a screen. They had a screen like this size backstage. So they'd walk out and then I would watch or I'd try and look from side stage, but you can't see shit there. You see their backs. At the Arnold, I was dead center, I think 12 rows back. So I was right there. So I can't compare the two. I'm comparing my eye from last weekend to a video. I guess guess the question I was going to ask is, is this Matt's? Was it? I want to know if it was both their decision or one or the other, or maybe they just went so far with the conditioning they couldn't fill him back out because he might have lost some tissue. Because it's almost like they both maybe made a decision to come in as sharp as possible, but yeah. maybe they pushed the condition. You know how when you get too flat or you push the condition too far, you might lose yeah. a little. You lose a little tissue. You can't bring that fullness back. Yeah. So I wonder if they knew that was happening and just didn't care because he's got so much muscle or it kind of happened without them really realizing it because I'm sure that I'm sure they recognized it. I'm sure they realized, I mean, I don't think he lost much size. I know the the quads are probably the biggest question mark, right? Well, that's, I'm not saying he lost size. Like I just, I noticed his chest was a little flatter and his quads were a little flatter than they were at the Olympia. They definitely didn't play the coming in blasting full game. They yeah. came in as, as sharp as possible. And with that, you you are gonna if you're slightly on the flat side, you're gonna look a touch sharper, Chris. Yeah. And when he's that when he's that lean and that hard and he has that much muscle and he's not a small bodybuilder, you can be on that flat side of things and, and get away with it. Let me ask you this. Does Nick Walker at the twenty twenty two Olympia beat Samson Dowda at the 2023 Arnold. No, no. I think, uh, again, it's hard because I didn't see Nick on stage at the Olympia directly, but I think he was harder and tighter here in Ohio. Yeah, but maybe maybe to a detriment. You know, like like maybe he doesn't need to be. Maybe he doesn't need to be that hard. that back double when he pulls it up and hits it, it, it was one of the most impressive things I've seen. And the whole fucking room. Yeah, just but went, he had that oh, same. Whoa. Okay, but wait a minute. Let me see. No, that. he didn't have that. He, there wasn't that reaction at the Olympia, not like he did at this Arnold. Ben, I was sitting in the audience at the Olympia. You weren't. It's kind of, we had the same. We have an opposite thing going on. I was sitting in front of a TV right. at the Arnold, but I was sitting in the audience at the Olympia. So we had we kind of swapped. Yeah. So the, the crowd did go apeshit when he hit that back double at the Olympia. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Let me see if I can find a picture from the Olympia because I don't. I remember him being pretty close to as conditioned. Uh, let's see here. I'll share this. Let's see. Hmm. This is before That's the show. Stage, yeah. Yeah, he needs to do shots. I can't throw any comparison to Hunter. Let's see. Is there... I can't find a back double anywhere. Wait, what's this? Oh, that's him and Hunter. <laughs> that was me before, right? What's this? This is a 2022 Olympia. Like, he's still shredded there. He's He was way sharper in at the Arnold. He was way the, harder than that. At this Arnold? This is just this, this last weekend. Oh, this that is the, was, this is the Olympia. Sorry. The, yeah, these are both the Olympia, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Year before, and then this. Do look at the one on the right. The red trunks was this. Okay, Olympia, but 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 hold on. This is what I'm trying to say. The he might have been sharper at the 23 Arnold, but what I'm trying to say is this condition is enough for him. He doesn't need to be sharper than this. This is still this is still sharper than everybody else, except for maybe Derek. Yeah, well, I think, and this is where it gets interesting because I don't know if he's able to beat Samson. Well, that's why I said I think with the added fullness he had at the Olympia, it would have been a different, maybe been a different story. I don't know for sure because Samson's physique is very, well, I, com- I know, very complete. I know the scorecards say Samson was straight fives, and I I had him winning both nights. It was close though. I wasn't sure on Monday. Friday. I wasn't. I'm sorry, Monday. I wasn't sure on Friday. On well, Friday, we was... sat in the. We all sat in the bar afterwards, and we. Yeah. I had it. I had Samson winning. Yeah. Um. I think. I, and I had it as Andrew would be. Se- I had Samson win, so therefore Andrew would be second because of that. That's the way they were leaning. Because see that Nick's, that, that, that didn't, didn't, Yeah. Sorry. Go no, ahead. but I just went. I just went off the fact that they're not going to split those two guys with very similar looks yeah but it's not I like that i didn't i didn't expect them to split them. no i know i was wrong but i had it samson winning and therefore andrew was going to come second but nick's condition and hardness because that, that's what i mean like a lot of people be like but how come nick lost because he was so conditioned i'm like well if you remove condition out of the equation so yep nick won condition now judge the show with yeah. condition off the table which samson's condition <laughs> wasn't bad and actually Something that gets lost. I noticed this. I watched the show on Friday night. Saturday morning, I wake up. I'm online. I'm like, damn, yeah. Andrew. Andrew photographs. Like, he looks so much sharper on the screen than he did in person. And Samson doesn't. Samson's wow factor is his density to him. That three. And you can't gauge that on the pictures. So if I judged it off of just the pictures, I probably would have had it in a different order. Yeah, because yeah. Andrew looked Andrew looked really impressive. He was great on stage, but he looked in the pictures. I was like, "Holy shit, he's sharp!" So just for people and at it, home, for people at home, so they know, because I've heard that I've heard that argument kind of many times. Like, well, if they went for shape, how come how come Andrew didn't take second? Because it's not that's not how they do it. It's not like okay, let's put all the shape guys in a row, and if you don't have shape, then you're seventh. No, they don't do that. They go, "What's the most complete package?" Yeah. So Samson was the most complete package. Nick was the second best complete package. The reason Andrew, it's not because, he, yes, his shape is like Samson's, but his muscularity is not close. When you turn, when you turn Andrew to the side, him, Nick, and Samson are not all on the same level. Nick and Samson and Rami were much thicker than Andrew from the side, and that's going to take Andrew some time to build up. So, I suspect. Andrew will start to really make some noise. Not that he's not already, but in the next year or two, as he builds up some thickness and density, then it'll be a different story. He's but, dangerous. He's very dangerous. But yeah, he definitely <clears throat> the um, the thickness is kind of what held him back. Yeah, we got uh, big boy entering the room, and that and that's where Samson really you have to see him on stage to understand the thickness of that. Back double the hamstrings, the glutes, the the adductors when they come through on his back double. They're all oh, boys. he's packed out. You're so you can't. Your fucking room's so bright. You're washed out. I'm my light's so bright. I can't adjust it. It's like he's that pale. <laughs> I can't see your face. 
Can you not? Let me try and play around on here quickly. I'm looking really bright. I can like barely see your eyes. It's because I'm so white. <laughs> let me let me let me try and do something with this. <laughs> imagine you were that. Imagine you were that white all the time. I am. It is glowing. I'm glowing literally. Uh, choose filter video. Let me try and change some stuff. Yeah, I know, but I need the light on because it's freaking too dark. I was. I can t- I can make it darker. Surely. I don't think so. <laughs> no, there's a way. There's a way, bruv. I'm sure. Hi. Yeah, Sandra. Look how white she is as well. <laughs> um, um, anyway, we can keep talking while I'm adjusting my whiteness because I don't want to disturb you because you were having a good chat. No, it's all right. I'll, we're just I'll, talking... get in, I'll get in good tones before. We're, we're talking about the show. James, where did you watch the show from? Did you watch it on TV? Or I, w- you... I watched the I watched the pre-judging on TV, the finals in life. I was there because I saw you on stage and I was. we were like, Farad, you fucking... But obviously, <laughs> yeah, so... How, uh... I've got a video of that of us screaming like a bunch yeah. of fucking reprobates. Where were you sitting uh, at the show? I was quite far back, so I kind of came forward um, towards the end of it. Um, well, James, you're always very uh, open and honest with your opinions. Yeah. You had Andrew winning the show. I did, originally, yeah. I think you had Samson in second. Let me see what you had here. I had Samson in th- second, no, third or second. It was got, him and Nick I'd said I didn't know. I got the list here. Let's take a look. Still trying to swear this. You had Andrew first, Nick second, Samson yeah. third, Sean, Bonac, Rami sixth. Yeah. He shit the bet on that one. I shit the bed on that one. But I'm glad I did because it, it's like the best situation to shit the bed on. Yeah, I Do you know. You know what I mean? I know. Um, so it's kind of. Don't worry, I shit the bed on it too. Yeah, like even, I know, I didn't even realize that. I looked to yours, I was like, shit, even he shit the bed. Well, so I was... had, listen, I had Samson winning. <laughs> I, had, I had Samson at first for like three months and then, or, or two months or whatever. And then all this, the trolls got to me. They're like, you're so biased. You're so biased. I'm like, yeah. Fuck, maybe I should look at my picks. Maybe I'm not being objective. So yeah. I made I made some changes and then I got burned for it. Yeah, you shouldn't have made those changes, dude. I should have stuck to my guns. I oh, why it's still so white. Why am I so white? But this I also listen. Wild. Yeah, sorry. I know. It's okay. You can we'll <laughs> just look at your uh, most like, people most people listen to this anyway rather than watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, more people watch, James. Oh, the more people watch. Okay. Yeah. I bet swear. Um you know, honestly, I'll be honest with you. Part of what I thought before going into the show is I think, and I said this to Paul, and you guys correct me if you think I'm wrong, but uh, the traditional judging would have lent itself more towards the conditioning. Yes. And I think we were looking at it from that perspective. Because if you go back to like 2015, 2010, or just just previous shows, I feel like they put more uh, stock. That's better. It's a little better. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they put um, more they put more stock in conditioning. So I thought that's how it was going to go. And I thought... I th- you know, Rami came back a lot bigger, and I thought he was going to get rewarded for it. And, and Rami did look good; like he did look really good. I why was there; are, like I, I was like, he was incredible. Why are they anti Rami all of a sudden? Because I thought he looked pretty great. I think it's just because there's still some triceps missing. I think they want to give him a bit more time. If he can get those triceps a bit more full again, maybe he'll, you know, because I think that's the only thing that was kind of missing for me. Ben, you saw him up there. What did you think of Rami? Like I thought he looked amazing when he came out. Which night? We talking about finals? Finals. Well, finals. He was better, but I still thought even when he walked out at prejudging, I'm like, he's still way better than the Olympia. The problem with Friday for me was his quads were so enormous. Yeah, I know they, huge. they blew him out. He just he just went, what the fuck am I looking at here? It didn't make sense. Yeah, and then my brain, my brain just went, no, that doesn't, no, that's not what you should look like. Yeah, like I agree. They, they were so enormous. I even like the next day, James, we went and trained with Dom, and Dom was like, oh, what do you think of? Rami last night, and I was like, honestly, it was so distracting. Like his legs were so full. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what I couldn't compute. Yeah, ain't I it mean, crazy when you, ain't it crazy when your legs are too big? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it's the same argument in reverse, right? Like we said, Samson won because he was the most complete and most I balanced, so, yeah. and most yeah, balanced, yeah. and balanced. And I guess Rami's just not balanced. His legs are so big. And there is, there, yeah. If they're yeah. full, if they're remotely full, they're obscene. They're like, it looks yeah. fake. It looks yeah. like Photoshop on stage, and then your eye just goes, this is stupid, move on. Yeah. Next one. Sam- Samson yeah. definitely had, you know, top to bottom, best balance, front to back, the best. It was, it was, he literally, he may not have won every shot, but he didn't lose any shots. Yeah. It's like, it's if he had a, like, you know, if he had a score out of 10, he was hitting eight on every shot. And that well, adds that, up. That's what I said. Well, on that's what I mean. Everyone was going through, well, this, like, back double versus back double. But, and I'm like, no, who's the best bodybuilder on that stage right now? Well, Paul, who's the most... 
I'm going to, I'm going to repeat myself. I already said this on the last podcast, but Paul explained it very well to me because he said, it's kind of like fighting where you judge a 10, eight round versus a 10, 10, nine round. Yeah. And he said like, when you're judging Nick's back shots and side shots versus Samson's, he said, they're more like 10 nines. Yeah. But he said, when you're judging the front shots, Samson versus Nick, it's more like a 10, eight. Yes. Like so he earns back. He earns back. Yeah. Yeah. So he earns back some points. And then when you look at the overall shape, it's almost a 10, eight as well. And then, Nick has him on a 10, eight or 10, nine on a condition. So that's yeah. kind of how Paul, and it kind of made sense to me. I'm like, okay, so it's like a law of averages, whereas it's not just like this pose versus that pose. And that's the end. I, I was always, I don't know whether this is right or wrong. I always go by who loses the least. Okay. Right? Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, okay, yeah, same, same, same. One there and then go, okay, that take that one out. Then he can't, you know, that, that's how I break it down rather than looking at the, okay, he wins that, he wins that. I'm like, who's losing, losing the least ground here. Well, that's what yeah. me and remember me and Hani were arguing after prejudging and Hani, yeah. Hani was saying that Nick's, <laughs> you got a bit pissy on that one. Well, because <laughs> he was, like, I'm, I'm not no. new to this. <laughs> well, cause he was being insulting. He's like, he's like, he's like, well, what do you know about, about bodybuilding? I'm like, uh, I'm literally an analyst. <laughs> like, what do you yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like, but he was trying to tell me that Nick's that Samson's back shots were better than Nick's. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's not true. But then when he did make sense, he said, what, what we did agree on was Samson's front shots were so much better. And that's where he picked up ground. Yeah. But I, but I didn't agree with him that Samson's back shots were better than Nick's Nick's back shots were best, best in the show. In my opinion. Uh, I wouldn't say best in the show. I think Rami had the best back double. I really? think. Even with the, yeah, I still think he had the best back double in in all. I disagree. He's missing his lower lats. Yeah, yeah, but he 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 was opening him up enough. I still feel like, I I don't know, like looking at everybody's backs in a back double, the most pleasing to my eye, apart from the triceps being missing, was Rami. (laughs) Apart apart from this body part that's missing, (laughs) Rami wins. (laughs) Yeah, because I don't, I don't, I don't see how Nick doesn't. If it was just a straight pose competition, yeah. And it was a back double bicep competition. I don't see how Nick loses that one. Nick's lower because... body, you can't touch. I feel like his back still needs a bit more front to back depth. Wait, I'm gonna find. Uh, there's a good. Yeah, but on that on that sto- on that stage that night, especially Friday night, I don't. Yeah, think and, and I won't lie, I wasn't. I wasn't as close as you guys. So, I just really liked Rami's back double. I could be totally like. I don't think there's a back. Should... There's no back double in there. Let's see if there's. Here, we'll go through them here. I think. Like that's oh. a good top four, man. <laughs> Oh man, it was an awesome show. Like an awesome show. It was fun to be at, man. I tell you, that was that was a really good Arnold. Yeah. Like I, any if any one of them that won that show that night, I would have been like, okay. I think that's kind of what me and Dennis said, and we said that on yeah. the last the last podcast as well. Like you could have they made were. an you could have made an argument for, you know, al- almost any of the four. Same, I agree. I was kind of happy to see Andrew had had made such a drastic improvement. Yeah, same, same from from the last show. Like his back was hard as fucking nails. Yeah. All right, so there we go. Back double. I can see what you're saying, James. It's just got like a certain pleasingness to it. I know the lats. Uh, I think if he was a bit more upright, it still wouldn't look as as missing as that. He still he looks put, disproportionate. He's, to t- me, he's, t- he's still he's tilting a little bit too much from the spine rather than the hip. Yeah, I think. It's like the you look- see how Nick's got a straighter back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that would help a little bit, but that's just me just guessing. I mean, the lower body is so fucking big. It's like... that's what, I know, and, <laughs> but, it's and like... but it's disproportionate though, right? It takes away a little bit. I don't know yeah. if it. I don't know if it does from the back. It looks Le- less so. No, obviously less so from the back. From the front yeah. on the Friday night, it was silly. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is this is the Saturday where it was much more in keeping with his flow. I don't know when yeah. I when I look at this, I see Nick winning this. Like hands down, there's the detail in his hamstrings. Yeah, you know, hams are nuts. Hams are crazy. Adductors are crazy. Back is full, top to bottom. And like the fucker doesn't move. It, his hams reminded me of Branch's hams back in the day. Like they were just wait, 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 wait. He just pulled it in more. <laughs> he just yeah. it, got, it got even yeah. harder. He flexed it all the way in. He he was that is like his career best condition, and I I get why they did that because it's fucking impressive. And on a on a lot of shows that would have won. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally uh, get it. They came with a game plan, and it was a good game plan. I'm trying to Shit, decide. I mean, both him and, both uh, him and Sean were nailed down hard. I, I think what's hard is Samson's leg shape is just spectacular. 
I see a couple things I'm not sure I like, and I want to run them by you. Go on, go on. So one, Samson's standing almost straight up. Yeah. And I wonder how much more detail would show in his legs if he had a little bit of a squat, like kind of like Nick is or like Rami is a bit. See how they're like squat a little bit and they got the knee turned out? Yeah. I wonder if that would almost look better. And then I also see Andrew's arms are Too literally, high. they're literally straight across. Whereas you see Nick and Samson almost have like an upwards tilt. Yeah. I wonder if that would look better on Andrew if he had that like elbow pointed upwards a little uh, bit. I think all Andrew needs to do, because he's got short biceps, is close his arms a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can see that. If he, if, if he just closes a little bit more, they'll look ridiculous. He does, he does that a little bit on his front double as well. He, he, yeah. he does here, and I wish he would just pull it in a bit. In a, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he's got like Coleman biceps, which and Coleman used to sh- like put it quite high over, like you know, look nuts. Let's see the back lat spread. Look. I think Samson has the back lat spread. You think Samson wins the back lat spread? Over Nick, I'm talking, I'm talking about those two. I think I prefer Samson's in person. Yeah, Nick's back double is is a is a wash for me, but I think Samson has him. I, I prefer Nick uh, Samson's back. Shake. Yeah. yeah, I think Nick. I think, thickness. I think Nick's got both back shots. Personally, it's clo- it's certainly close on the lat spread for me, but I would edge it to Samson. But it's mm. I'm it's that's an apple and orange thing. I wonder if like with Andrew, if he had his shoulders a little bit less lifted, how he'd look. I was going to say this is actually a lot more impressive than I remember his back being. His back was really wide. I just feel like his yeah. shoulders could do with being, you know, in a back lat spread, you don't have to bring your shoulders up too much. You can bring them down. Yeah, he's lifting them up. He's lifting his yeah. whole shoulder girdle up. Like, like, like a front. He's doing like a front lat spread, but on the back. Yeah. yeah. But if yeah. he kind of rolled it over a little bit more and sat into it, I think it would look even more impressive. Well, that, that would also, it would also bring out the rhomboids a little bit more, like create that see, like V. You see the rear delts and shit, like kind of do that. Yeah. yeah. I do I do think Andrew could do with tweaking his pose in between now and when he next yeah. gets on stage. I think he does, yeah. he's got a. I think he can show off his physique better than he is. Definitely, right now. definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think. I mean, everybody has something to work on, right? Like, yeah, Nick has to. I think Nick needs to go back to being a little bit more full bodybuilder, and stop trying to be aesthetic. I think Nick needs to play to his strength, which is being a fucking a mutant, right? Like, he's not gonna yeah. win. He's not gonna win the aesthetic battle versus Derek Samson, Andrew. Like, he's not gonna win that battle. So he needs mm-hmm. to play to his strengths, which are. Of being a fucking freak. Well, mus- mus- muscularity and conditioning. That's right. And I think they pushed the conditioning so far at the show, he lost some of that crazy freak factor. Just a little bit of that. He was he was slightly lighter in the legs than yeah. he needed to be and a little bit less pop in the upper body. If you look at Andrew, I think he's got the conditioning pretty close to down pat. I think he just needs more, more, o- more overall thickness, which I don't know if he can get that between now and the Olympia. Wait, he, I, I noticed that where he was that much sharper for the Arnold, he'd lost a little bit of his upper body pop and fullness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we talked about that on the last podcast. It's kind of like we've been saying leading up to the Olympia, which is like anytime. Tra- it's a trade off, isn't it? Yeah, you trade yeah. off a little bit. but And then Samson needs to build up that back a little bit more and get more conditioned. Just more lat, isn't it? It's more lat with Samson. Like the, the, the back itself is not that bad. Like it's just a lat. Well, for me, when I, for me, when I look at Samson, it's a couple things. I think. Not necessarily this pose, but the back double bicep could be fixed. Yeah. Um, but it's more like because I'm not comparing him, like I'm comparing him to Derek. Yes. Because I think Derek is gonna be like leading lights. the charge. Yeah, yeah, I really think he's gonna be lights out at this Olympia. Mm. And uh that's who I'm comparing him to. So when you look at Derek's here, check this out. When you look at Derek's back double, you're like, that's okay, nice. wait a minute. Like, look at this, look. look at this physique. The dude don't even lose muscle like any time of the year. Like I, I reckon if he came off all stuff, he'd still hold like most of his tissue. But it's like it's it's this is he's got the combination of shape and mass, shape, mass, and conditioning. conditioning. Yeah, like even he's off season. Look at the condition he's in. Yeah, he doesn't get much fatter than that. No, it's blinding. I I just went to you thought about this and Derek and that his his quads on the Olympia stage were I felt like they lost him a little bit because he's got better legs than he. Then you see. Look at yeah. that. The play button's in the way, but look at his fucking glutes. Yeah, and it's glutes. like <laughs> he's he's really built, off the he, Olympia. He is really building momentum now, like with his physique where you hasn't have to restrict himself. Look at this. That looks like it's four weeks out, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of like he he, he, uh, he reminds me of Flex Lewis, but now in an open. 
in a bigger like, yeah, yeah 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 like like it's what we want he's what we wanted to see from flex look at that like this is if that, I was, that's if the I, perfect proportions if i was samson i would have this tacked on my fucking fridge on your fridge bro and then look at it every morning <laughs> because i'd be like this is what i have to beat that's what uh i think Roden uh when Roden was prepping i remember watching a video of him and ronnie and they had a picture of someone on the fridge yeah <laughs> I would do. I, I'm serious. I would do it because it keep in mind what you're working against. He's how the fuck do you beat? Look at someone that. like that. <laughs> Look at his waist. Look at his fucking waist and his legs. Look at this. This is fucking retarded. He's yeah. got God given, obviously work rate, but also the, ta- the genetics in that is just like, pff, all right, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. He's gonna be. He's gonna be crazy. He could probably win the Olympia like six, seven times. Think so? Yeah, he's only, what, 28, 29? Yeah, he's not 30 yet. I said that after the last Olympia. I said, I think if there's somebody that has potential to have like a dynasty, it's going to be Derek or Quint. I can see Samson do. I know he's older. No, when I say dynasty, I'm talking like competing with Phil and fucking Lee, right? Okay, but let me put you Yeah, like holding on to many Olympias. But let me ask you a question, hypothetically speaking, and I'm trying not to get carried away with Samson here, right? Because it's easy to do. See, I'm, trying, he to, comes... I'm trying to remain as objective as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Comes... <laughs> I see this. Say, say, say he comes in a little thicker in the back and a little bit harder and wins wins an Olympia, right? Say he wins this year, one Olympia, hypothetically speaking. The confidence and momentum, you know what that would do to you. Yeah, yeah. I your, get it. Your headspace. If he could figure out, him and Milos can figure out to come in that much harder with good fullness who beats him if his back's a little thicker because I mean, he's that big i mean andrew's the next one andrew's got to be the next argument hey man you've got 10 pounds to put on and then you can be pushing him but i don't I, know i just i just see too much there. i guess i guess it's this is fun. this is how i'm looking at it to me derek is already there like derek is is like one step away from like yeah. like his legs are his legs look improved already yes yeah. agreed right but but say between now and november samson figures out that extra bit of weight and that little bit more sharpness i know but you're forgetting that derek is also gonna, gonna, is also going to get better between now and november yes but then you have so they're both so they both figure it out and they're both 100 now you have one guy who's six foot and 290 pounds peeled versus with great shape versus a guy that's Five foot six seven and weighs two forty five. Yeah, I don't know if that matters because Derek's proportions are so crazy that I don't. It's not a. It doesn't look right on paper. Like who cares if he's five six or five uh, seven? I, I think because, shit because comes because down to your line. eye matters. Your eye matters on the day. Say they're both one hundred percent and they're both as hard as like their condition is comparable. Their size and muscularity is comparable, but one of them. But not size, but yeah, but one this of them is, is this is a this is a crazy hypothetical. We we can only go by we all wish the crazy. Yeah, like this, we can only go by what we have seen. We can't all the yeah, same. And I'm seeing, but I'm seeing I'm witnessing Samson's trajectory. And I'm like, if he carries it on and gets it right, even if Derek gets it right, I think Samson's gonna be a handful for anyone. If Derek okay, what you're saying is is right if it's possible. If Samson can build his back to the same thickness as Derek's. And bring in similar condition to Derek. Yes, he will beat him, of course. But that's those are big ifs. Like oh those yeah, are, of course. Those are big ifs. Um, I'm excited to see, like, say, Quint, um, Andrew, and uh, Samson at the Olympia, because I just think them three, like, genetically, are just like <laughs> mind boggling. Yeah, structurally. structurally, and they're so they got the height. Like them three in a lineup, just going to make everyone look so short. <laughs> I think. Look, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I definitely think Samson can win an Olympia. I think he yeah. has more of an uphill battle to climb than then, Derek. Yeah. Than Derek. Derek's I think, there. I think Derek's... if I would, I think if I was going to predict that Samson wins an Olympia, I would predict it now. for yeah for twenty four. Yeah, because yeah. I think for him to develop the back thickness he needs, he's going to have to do an off season again. It, it might not be this, and then you also have to remember something too, Ben. Samson's got perfect waist to shoulder to quad ratio right like the whole x frame you also have to make sure if this guy starts pushing 300 350 330 again is he going to be able to keep his waist in yeah if that if that waist starts to go at all because they're trying to really build that back and push size then 
so, so, something happens there too, I, right? I, I, yeah, I, if I was him, I would just allow the rebound to happen rather than forcing it. Yeah, and just let, his body's going to want to grow. It's been in prep since fucking how long? Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, nobody would be happier than me if Samson fucking won. Like we, it, it'd be incredible. Yeah. But I'm trying to be but, as obje- objective as possible. Yeah. And when I look at Derek's oh. physique, I'm like, that guy's fucking there. Like yeah. he's there. Yeah. I, I do expect take Samson out of the conversation for right now. I expect Derek to leapfrog Hardy. Yeah, I honestly like even if hot if Derek would have beat Hardy last, no one would have said shit. No one would have said shit. I don't think anybody would have complained. No, it was very the, very close. I think the I think the quad size and fullness stopped. No, no but you're not you're not hearing me. I I know Hardy was better, but I'm saying I don't think people would have fucking freaked out. If Derek would have won, it was certainly close enough to be either way. You know, it's yeah. like a, a yeah, yeah. 2001 situation. Yeah, yeah. but um, I don't. I, I mean, I don't expect Hardy to hold that down with Derek chomping at him like he is. I don't expect that to stay that way. Yeah, I don't think. I don't know why. Maybe that's wrong of us to overlook Hardy, but I don't see him as being a dynasty, Mister Olympia. I think it's because we don't know. We don't see Huddy work like we see. We can see Derek. We can see what he's up to. So we're a little bit more insight. Do you know what I mean as well? So we're a bit more familiar with his presence. And I know that what does... you mean. Yeah. No, no, I, I understand what you mean. I think for me, it's more, I think Huddy's maxed. Yeah. Like he's where come does, a long way. Like where does Huddy go from, where last, he is. From, where, from last year? Is he going to get bigger? Is he going to get wider? Like, can't really do anything it's all there yeah like he could be a bit sharper right because he was sharper the year before yeah yeah i agree there i agree yeah yeah and that's it's going to be an interesting uh year this one for sure yeah and i think that's why i have that opinion is because hardy has been steadily getting better but kind of at his peak yeah where i feel like Derek is still fucking going like this but is there anybody is there anybody outside of those two that can win this olympia coming up shock factor Nick, Samson. Do you think? Yeah. I think Nick and Samson are definitely candidates. Okay. Is Brandon Curry done? Nah. He said, I'll be back next year for the Arnold, so I don't think he's done. No, but I mean, do you think he has a chance of winning an Olympia again? Uh, I, I can't write off anybody because, look, like Samson done wonders for me this week, this week gone, whenever it was. He proved to me that you shouldn't even, anything's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like never write, and, and that helped me believe in myself as well. Because it's like, yeah. don't write anybody off, them or you. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. The only reason I would say that about Brandon is just because he's a little bit older. I think he's got a lot of family stuff going on too, and I wonder how much. I wonder how hard it is to stay like. Really, uh, or... let's take Derek's focus versus Brandon's focus. Yeah, when you haven't had it yet, <laughs> Derek. Derek does, has never won it. Doesn't have any kids. And basically lives his life for bodybuilding, whereas Brandon has a full family. He's got stuff going on. I wonder if he can have that same level of focus or if he even needs to. Yeah. Like, imagine being Mr. Olympia and an Arnold champion and you get invited back to the Arnold every year to chill with your boys. Like, you've already kind of, like, I don't know. It'd be hard to stay super, super motivated. You feel like you've got it all. Like, if you'd won both of those shows, how would you stay, you know, have the fire? Money. Money, <laughs> money, baby. Depends what you're doing for money, isn't it? Like if you're doing, oh, well, I think, I think, it, I think it exceeds, it exceeds money because realistically, the, the Olympian money isn't life changing, life changing on its own, right? Well, it's not life changing, but still four hundred grand. Yeah, even yeah, three hundred grand. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I, I know, but if you've won one or two and you've monetized your career well enough, that should be stability enough right yeah 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 yeah. should be i I think motivation has to come from something it's got to be just bodybuilding it's bodybuilding yeah of of course of course none of us can do this solely for money i get it i'm just saying i mean it's definitely uh i think that's what i'm impressed about chris bumstead more so than anyone else because he can make money without this because the money because the money really isn't fucking worth it for him yeah 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 like it's 50 grand for him to win olympia right yeah. He's got to do an appearance next week. He, his, he gets he that in a weekend. Yeah, that's yeah. Nothing. But his, uh, I think his motivation is legacy. I see, I see his motive, and I could be, I could be way off. It's just what I, I picture him sitting at home going, "I'm going to win so many of these fucking things. No one's ever going to fucking even come close." Like I have, I have a feeling he just sits there and goes, "I'm going to win ten. I'm going to win ten, so that my name is solidified forever as being the greatest ever." I uh, wouldn't blame him either. And he probably could win ten. Probably good. 
<laughs> he's kind. He's, that would be you know, that would be my motivation. I'm like, I'm gonna put this shit so far out of reach, nobody can even come close. <laughs> yeah, like you, you know that by the end of your time on Earth, no one's even close to your record. You're like, yeah, ah, sweet. I didn't see it happen. <laughs> didn't count. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if Lee Haney thought that was going to happen, and then Ronnie Coleman. Oh, he off. must have. And yeah. the thing is, Lee could have done more because Lee was 32 when he retired. Yeah. He yeah. could have, and it, who knows? He could have beaten another. Like, but Dorian with Dorian, but with Dorian would have beat him in '93. I don't know, would he? If he knew Dorian was competing and saw the improvements, you just don't know, do you? It's so hypothetical, like we say. I wonder if Lee would have beat. It would have been a good fight. It would have been a good fight. Ninety-three fight Dorian. Battle. Ninety-three. Who's your favorite Dorian? Ninety-four was probably my favorite Dorian. Um, it depends what show because some of them like I've seen him at non Olympias and looking really good. But ninety three and ninety five are the two that most stand out, isn't it? What was ni- uh, it was ninety five like- is when he was a bit bigger but super super conditioned as well. For me, it was like when he got. Bigger, I think you like but- ninety five. You like ninety five. It was when he was bigger, but his stomach still hadn't like grown. Yeah, in you, it, I, I think you like ninety five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was what a lot of people's favorite. Um, guess what? Tomorrow is James, or by the time this airs, it will already have passed, but. Wait, what is tomorrow? That was fucking unknown. Is it something really important? I've forgotten. It's, it's a massive day. The eleventh of March. Yeah. No, it is. Can I? Can I spoil? No, no. Why? Let me spoil. Oh, no, James this is should, annoying. James, you make James me look like. Know. Is it because it's got to be the birthday of the podcast? <laughs> or some shit. You're close. You're close. <laughs> Hostile. Yeah, it's the birthday of Hostile. Two, what? No, how many years you're now? Both, you're both wrong. Your wife's going to kill you. No, no, I know what you're going to say. It's I was going to finish the, the whole thing. It's the birthday of Hostile. It's the birthday of my wife. Oh, really? And it's the birthday of Samson. Wait, all of those are actually true, yeah? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's good. I yeah. like that. Yeah. That's historical. <laughs> it's historical. <laughs> it's a historical moment in time. Oh fuck! Um, well, well done. Congratulations. What's that now? How many not, years now? How many three, years? Is... Three years in business. Fucking hell! Go figure. By, I, th- I thought I thought we weren't going to get past year one. Now we're on year Shit, fly. James, it's not that historical. It happens every year. <laughs> wow! It will still be it'll uh, literally yeah. be. It does. It happens every year. Every I'm year. looking at this from a totally, you know. James, I was I was your. You've been traveling all over the fucking place, and then you you drove down with uh, the gas people from Texas to. Columbus, how was that? That was actually fun because I was with Nick filming Del Toro, and he had one of we had another guy from Sweden, um, uh, Elliot Kim, who's really cool. Mm-hmm. He's like he's Swedish Korean, and I was just totally ripping on him for being Korean for the whole time. It's brilliant, you know. You know what I'm like? <laughs> you're being totally, so was, ri- you're being totally. I was just doing Korean jokes the whole way, and it was brilliant. And he was, you know, <laughs> he was laughing, and he takes he loves the banter. So he's only young. He's like I think he's about twenty years old. Brilliant kid, love him great awesome to be around i had a fucking blast like honestly it was it was really fun if them two weren't there it wouldn't have been the same but they were you know so. you know what i love i love it when people don't take themselves too seriously well, and, this you, dude's and you can make like you know you can have racial jokes and you can just fuck around and like bro like everybody has a laugh instead of people being yeah too like it, it called me everything under the sun i called him everything under the sun it's absolutely hilarious <laughs> I, I was having such a good time it was brilliant and then he was obviously taking a piss out and the anika would be norwegian because he's yeah. swedish so okay. there was just a lot of good, you know, camaraderie and fun going on in the bus. Who was in the? Who else was in the bus? Was was Branch uh, with you guys or no? No, no, he's like, fuck it, I'm flying. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he so was like, fuck you, it. So it was you, Michael, me, Michael, Edmund, Michael's son. Ed, oh, okay, uh, Edmund. Um, Yannicka. Okay. And and the two guys and the two boys. And you had Nick a good time, and, uh, Elliot. Yeah, I loved it because I was on the, There's a chair in there that spins. As yeah, ben I know. Tell you. And yeah. I was in, you know, I was in that chair, and I just felt like I was like captain of. Like the Starship Enterprise, <laughs> I, I, I loved it. I was just spinning around every night and talking to the guys. It was brilliant. Did you uh, did you train anywhere yeah. on the way down? We trained at uh, Olympus. You know, um, Sean Barber's gym. Is it Sean Barber? I I, never, I don't know it. No. Where so he is used it? to train. He used to train with Flex Lewis back in like two thousands um, in Tennessee. Oh, in Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, big gym, good gym, really yeah, old yeah. school, like yeah. yellow, all yellow. But it was it was a really good gym, and we go in there, and some kids come up, and they're like oh, well, nice to meet you and all that. So it was really cool because obviously I'm just from England and Ben will tell you, like, he's from England originally. And when someone notices who you are abroad, it's quite nice. Yeah. Um, just because you feel like, oh, wow, my message has reached this area as well. So, no, we had a good session there. And then obviously, and then we saw uh, Ben um, Barbell, uh, American Barbell. American Barbell, yeah. The following day, because we only we drove in two days, so it was quick. I was there for I was there for five minutes. I didn't see you. I, I know you left. You left before us. You I had to run us. in and run out because I had to get back to get to the. I missed uh, you the entire thing, and then I, I, I was, I, I saw Paul in the toilet. The uh, thingy. I was like, yeah, I'd love to catch you guys tomorrow. I woke up late. 
He told me that you were standing behind him while he was taking I t- a piss. I touched him. I touched him. <laughs> I just came he's... up behind him, put my hand on his shoulder while he's got his dick out. He said you. He said he turned around. And you're like, I don't care if you got piss on your hands. Give me a hug. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't give a fuck. I was like, yes, Paul. <laughs> yeah, cool him. But yeah, you know, it was a great trip, man. Great trip. I got to. Uh... I got to say, I'd like to, I'd like my business. I'd like to be able to run my business like Michael does one day. I like, I think, uh, I think you've got the right mindset and the ideas already in place, haven't you? Really? I just like that, you know, so just the whole driving the team together kind of thing, I think is fun. And then yeah. when I got to American Barbell, he's got a fucking, you know, for people who don't know, obviously he's, he's big into like entertaining. He loves it. So amazing. I get to American Barbell to drop off guy. And he's got a barbecue outside with, like, steaks. with a bunch of tables with steaks and chicken and fucking, he's, yeah. got, a, he's got a rice cooker going. I'm like, yeah, this, guy, this guy's the fucking man. I'm yeah. Like, it's definitely something you can do. It. You're, you're creating that. You're creating that environment already, which is great. They do breakfast yeah. and barbells, right? On, uh, up at destination. They've yeah. got like a breakfast. Pan- right pancakes, and steak, all that stuff. See, that's what I, I need to move. I need to move to a more central location. Move to Texas, bro. I'll move there as well. Listen, I already I talked to a lawyer yesterday about getting my uh, E two visa. I'm going to make it happen. When are you doing it? As soon as I can get my visa, they said it might take a couple months. But I want to. I'm getting I'm getting my ass over there asap. You, so you like Texas of all the places you visited? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, Ben, don't leave. Stay in Texas, bro. I'm trying to tell well, Ben's uh, not, ben, I already talked listen, to. I already the, talked wait, to Dunn- wait, I already wait, talked to Denise. Two, two hours ago, I took those up for a walk. Came back. And Donise and her dad were outside the front of the house and we stood there chatting and we start game planning the expansion of the gym and the extension on the house. Oh, there good. You go. Then you ain't going. So it's perfect. Why don't we just build a complex? And we'll all have a, a house. Little city. It. I mean, it's just, it can, it so, can be hostileville. Well, we were going to, we're going to, we were trying <laughs> extending the gym and then put in um, like a living quarters inside the gym with a little kitchenette yeah. in there and yeah. then build in a, a two bed extension off here. And then extending our bedroom out with has its own little retreat. So, so that's where it took to keep you there. I see. Well, <laughs> I see. listen, I ben, I already talked to Dunny's James, and he she said if I move there, Ben's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're Just all we're all good. He's not going to go nowhere. So I'm, 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 de- I'm, I'm definitely get, I'm definitely getting my ass over there, man. I I trained in a couple of gyms I like, so <laughs> yeah, boy. Where you want to move to in, in Texas? Anywhere specific? I don't know. I'd like to be kind of near that area because I like the Plano Metroflex. Yeah. Um, it's a good gym. It's a kind of gym that really suits me. Yeah. Um, and then it, and then you can just drive like twenty minutes towards the destination if you want to, or go the other way, thirty minutes to like Arlington, whatever it's forty minutes to there. So it's kind of like in the hub. And then if yeah. I need to see you guys, obviously I'm in the fucking same state. I know it's a bit long, but you can come and do like days and see people. I was thinking Fort Worth is where I Fort Worth where Chris is, and it's nice. Yeah, that's kind of where I want to be. Yeah, go ahead, go it's ahead, good man. there. I was gonna say we were looking, we we started to contemplate putting a gym in between weatherford and fort worth that's we're like well maybe we could just put a gym there i got big plans coming up we gotta talk off the podcast oh. uh, dude i got some money in my account what are we doing boys let me get on this conversation <laughs> i've been saving for a year come on i'm not even joking that's some big plans we big can, plans we can build up. we can build like an alpha elite version a hostile version of alpha elite just yeah, fuck yeah. You without Soft bastards in there, yeah. Like a bodybuilder's version, hostile. bodybuilder's version, yeah. Yeah, no, um, yeah. So I talked to the lawyer, so we're gonna see. But then I talked to my brother afterwards, and he said, "I don't need a visa to buy a house there." Which to I buy already... a house, maybe, yeah. So this is so this is what I said. I called the mortgage agent in Dallas, and she said, "If I had a, a visa, that it would be easier to buy a home, and I'd put less money down, and blah 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 blah." Then I asked my brother about it because he owns a home in Florida. And he said yeah. to me, he said to me, that's not the case. Just here, I'll ho-. he hooked me up with his real estate agent. So I got to call him today or tomorrow and mm. uh, sort that out. But I definitely want to get a winter home. Yeah. I think I think I'm going to keep this house. Yeah, definitely <laughs> worth keeping if you can. Yeah. But I want to get a second house for the winter so I can fucking get the fuck out of here. But yeah. the problem the problem is the winters there is not much better than here. So it's I might still, still pretty cold. Yeah, so I might have to move like South Texas. Yeah, but it's not. It's cold, but it's not like fuck. I can't leave my house cold. Yeah, yeah, but it's cold enough that I can't ride my motorcycle. That's what I care about. Oh yeah, I mean iced over. Yeah, I want to be able to ride yeah. my motorcycle. So I'm thinking like yeah. I have to move to like Houston or something. Yeah, iced over in Houston too. Maybe I'll move maybe, to like Corpus maybe, Christi. Yeah. What the fuck's that? Is that like 
Is that like really south? It's all the way at the bottom. On the tip of the fucking yeah, border. It's fucking humid as hell. Yeah. Well, what the fuck, man? I just want to ride my motorcycle all year. I don't want to fucking. Why am I. California. Why would I move from one cold place to another cold place? I don't know. You brought it up. No one here. I didn't suggest that. I'm trying to get out of here. It's too fucking hot for me. All right. Let's move to Nevada then. No, I don't think that's that. I don't think that's the one. Why? It's no no taxes. It's warm all year. Well, pretty much warm all year. It's a bit dry, bro. It's like four hours. Yeah, dry dry heat's better. No, but the land's yeah, a bit wait. dry as well. The land's a bit like boring to look at. Have you seen Texas? What do you mean? Land? There's ma- there's mountains everywhere. What are you talking about? Yeah. The landscape's way better in Nevada. Uh, there's mountains. Uh, you can go. You can go hiking. You can do like it's crazy. All right. So many activities. You know, James. Every time he goes somewhere, he's like, "I love it." Yeah. yeah. Last <laughs> last year, he went to Florida. He's like, "I'm moving to Florida." That's it. I know. I know. It's because it's just because I come back to here, and then I'm like, "Fuck, England is so shit." You know what I can't? I, you know the reason I can't do England is it's just fucking rainy all the time, man. It's like, bro, it's it's how it's how much population there is. Everyone wants to knock each other's fucking head off because you're just yeah. on each other's feet all the time, and it's not good for people. Like I said, the only reason uh, discrimination, racism, any of these things exist here is not because it actually exists. It's because you're on each other's feet, so you get angry at each other, and then you say bad things. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, if you weren't, if yeah. you had space, you wouldn't be that way. Yeah, yeah Texas, like, there's, there's enough space here that if I don't like you, I'll just go and stand over there. Yeah, yeah and like, and, and you just don't, <laughs> I know you don't have these engagements to get aggressive and stupid. And I've just realized that because, like, driving here, dude, like, the reason people get out of their car and knock each other's head off is because you can't drive a mile up the road before you've got, like, it'll take you half an hour to drive half a fucking mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but, no wonder but, everyone's angry. Am I wrong about the weather? Is it rainy all the no, time? It's, it's, it's pretty shit. It's pretty shit. Okay. Imagine. Imagine just putting a grey filter on your oh, yeah. Sepia filter just turned grey a little bit. You know, it's like... funny. When I was younger, I didn't care. Something happened to me like a couple of years ago. If when it, I got like seasonal depression. When it's fucking, yeah. when it's cloudy, rainy, or shitty outside, I just, just feel terrible. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm just gonna stay in the basement. Well, I, 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 I was when I was over your side and I was in Texas. I trained in this Metroflex and I had a vest on, and the, the fucking shutters were up. And I was like, man, why would I want to leave this? Yeah. Like it was just perfect. Well, you know? the the what you've just come for, and when you came last time after the Olympia out here, was like West. good weather. It, yeah. You weren't here in the hundred and five degree. Like it's like forty plus degrees Celsius and humid as fuck. Oh man, that must be pretty then, hard work. Then you go like I don't know yet how Ronnie and Branch used to train in that fucking place in the height of the summer. Yeah, but you get I've trained in there. I've trained in there once, and I was like, I just want to fucking die. I thought I was dying. Yeah, but you yeah, get but acc- acclimated to it. I've talked to Chris about this, Chris Tuttle about this, because he said he wasn't used to the heat when he got here from got there from Connecticut. But he's yeah. used to it. bullshit. Chris goes and trains in an air, co- air conditioned gym. I know the gym he goes into. Yeah, I train a- in absolute gym. recomp. Yeah, Alex, <laughs> he's got used to the air conditioning. <laughs> like, <laughs> true. <laughs> like, come come train. You've trained in my fucking little hut. I trained in there yeah, when it was hot. I was fine. That was no, pretty hot. You, no, no, no. You didn't train there when it was like 110. Listen, I'm off all the juice and I'm I'm natural now. I can I don't get hot like I used to. Well, James <laughs> is James is I'm just I'm boy. just putting I'm just putting more in because I'm trying to get bigger. <laughs> like, uh, fuck Why this. are you doing? I was off the reserves. I was like, fuck this. I, I've just today, as of today, uh I, I'm gonna be honest, six hundred testosterone and anthony. Oh, I didn't mean that. I mean, like, what's your like? Oh no, I'm plan. telling you what I'm doing. I'm telling you what I'm doing. And why, then, six, uh, why? Why six hundred? It's so low. <laughs> Fuck! Don't start that. Fuck off. Just crack it up. And then uh, mass run. I'm going to run pretty high. I'm going to run that around a thousand. Oh, okay. That's the difference. I would one I of do, those. I do the old yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm doing this new way, but we'll see. Um, anyway, that's where I'm at. But yeah, no, I've got no plans. No plans. Show wise, in a minute, Ben. Do you think the new way works better, James? I don't know. Fuck knows. If I don't get big, I'm going back to the old way. <laughs> there's no. It doesn't matter about new way, old way. Whatever you put in, there's a cascade of negatives as well. There's always a trade off somewhere. No, some... no, but I'm not saying that it's not negative. There's no negatives or, or oh, side effects. Course. I'm saying have people noticed that it's making them bigger, more muscular? I, don't, I, I think I think it's just all they notice is their blood works slightly better. I don't it, think it's, it's like I don't a, think, it's yeah. a harm reduction. Yeah, thing. I don't think it's like so I'm, much. Yeah. I tell you, the best harm reduction thing is not take them. Just don't bodybuild, bro. Like, and I'm not saying that's not my answer. My blanket statement answer. There are better ways to do things. No, but that's a when, that's when you're that's not a good what, good message. No, what I mean by that is when you're start chasing. Don't take, 
when you start chasing different compounds to offset things, you just end up tying yourself in a web. No, I know. But what I'm yeah. saying is I, I'm not of the belief that there's no way to make things better. So what I'm saying to you is if people are noticing in their blood work that taking less tests and more master on is better for my blood work, then that's great. If they're, if it's, yeah. if it's the same either way, then, then so. But I, what, what my point being is, okay, your blood work in this short phase might appear better, right? By using a certain combination of, of anabolics, yeah. but you're still taxing the body and loading it. And whilst you might be, yeah, of course, and whilst you might be able to obtain healthy looking lab markers, there's a there's a great big picture that we don't look at. No, no, I think people do look at it. Nobody is out here, or any. Well, I'm sure there is somebody. None of us are out here saying that you can take juice safely and you can get to 300 pounds and pound juice safely. All wait, of us, wait, yeah. all of us know that if you're going to get to 300 fucking pounds, uh, majority of it being muscle, and you're going to pound steroids and you're going to do that for a decade, you're definitely going to harm yourself. I think what I try to do, or like when we're talking about like, you know, Merrick helping out with blood work and shit like that is mitigating as many fucking issues as possible. You could do, you could do steroids and be a bodybuilder the way I did, or you could do steroids and be a bodybuilder the way Ian does or the way James is, yeah. and you're going to end up better off at the end. I did it recklessly. Hopefully. That's just the plan. Yeah, but I, I, did, I, I did I just... It. I did it. I see guys reckless. come to me. I see guys come to me with so many other things in place to correct this, correct blood pressure, correct. And what's I'm, they all have a place, and they're all worth considering. It just seems like a, a hodgepodge mixing pot. Yeah, but but that's not a that's not a bad thing though, Ben. If I take if I weigh two hundred fifty pounds plus, and I'm taking steroids, maybe I have a hereditary issue, and I have blood pressure, a high blood pressure issue. Yeah, I'm masking it. I'm going to put a Band-Aid on that shit by taking a blood pressure med. Of course, of course, of, wait a minute. But of course, the right answer is to lose weight, get off the fucking juice, and, and do a lot of cardio, get your blood pressure down naturally. But what we're trying to do is tell people, like, look, if you still want to pursue this path, it's dangerous, but you could probably help yourself a little bit by throwing in a fucking blood pressure medication. Yeah, it's a tricky one because it's a fine line to tread because I don't disagree with <laughs> keeping things in as intact as possible where where possible, right? Yeah. I think you and I think you can utilize the a lot of different compounds to offset some of the damage, but I just have a hard time retrospectively like just looking over someone's protocol and seeing 10 different compounds in there during an off season when I'm like just just take a baseline amount and eat food and train hard and be patient and work hard. I, I can't. Yeah, yeah. No. Guy, but what I mean, it always correlates with the higher the anabolic load, the more of whatever's going on. So I'm like, why don't you run 350, 500 test? What's wrong with running that? Like yeah, I, I'm instead, not sure. of a, instead of a gram, yeah. like, why are we going up to a gram? And now there's this problem, this problem, this problem. For the most part, I'm seeing the guys that are built for it make it without having to force too much on their bodies. You're right about that for sure. I mean, look, we there's we know people that I just said this on the last podcast. You, we, we, we I saw Victor at the show. Yeah, you can see the guys that were built for bodybuilding. Because they barely fucking work out anymore, and they're still they're fucking, still like this wide and fucking. Victor still looks like Victor. He doesn't he's still like, web. And you can tell the guys who maybe were not necessarily built for it, but had to use some aids to get there, like myself, for example. So yeah. it's like, of course that's a scenario, but it doesn't matter. None of that matters. The point is, people want something, and they're willing to take a risk to get there. And what we try and do is say, if you're going to take that risk. Just take a look at these other things so you can mitigate some of that risk. But I'm I'm totally in agreement with you that doing less is a good thing, but yeah. only only to a certain amount. If you I say, love it and that's a bit that's a bit that I'm like I'm interested in. What's the balance point, right? What point is it go? Okay, this is too much of everything else to to keep me in range versus. We had this conversation with Justin. Remember? 
But we had a conversation with Justin. Justin at the time, this was like, I don't know, I think it was like four months ago or whenever, whenever I was in Texas. We had this conversation with Dustin James and we said, you're too lean. I think he was like 255 or 260 at the time. I don't remember. And we're like, you're too lean. You need to start fucking eating. And he's like, yeah. well, it's not healthy, this and that. And we're like, look, it's not healthy, but there has to be a level of extreme you're willing to go to to make your body change. Yeah. So, Especially the longer you've been doing this shit. So I don't know if we got through to him or not, but next thing you know, he's like 270, 280. <laughs> and he's like, he's a lot bigger and he's eating you a little go, bit. You, of, go, you go through to him. <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of what I'm saying is, yes, I agree people should take less, but it's only up to the individual how hard they're willing to push their body. Yeah. Right. For the, for the speed in which they want to achieve their goal. And it, and it, and it is all individual. You know, if you're James and you're going, okay, well, I want to crack the top 10 at the Olympia, then yeah, yeah we can't, we can't push you for the round things. Yeah. I had this conversation with Jordan today, like I had a very honest conversation. It's like, we tried to do something this year. We, we kept everything under one gram in total. We were literally super fucking reserved and we, we wanted to see what the outcome was in, in terms of how much muscularity could be obtained on that. And I was very happy with it, but I am very aware that for me to have a successful growth period, I'm going to have to now elevate things to touch. You know, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, I have to be serious. Like I've done more in the past and my body probably knows that. Therefore, it, it, I can't expect it to do much on less, you know, which is annoying. Look, but it's, it's what it is. It's kind of like the whole main gaining concept, right? Greg mm. Doucette, Greg Doucette talks about main gaining and how you should stay lean and you can get pretty big. We actually don't disagree that much. We both say that you should get up to like 15% body fat in the off season. Yeah, max, yeah. So which is kind of what my opinion is too, but, and to me, that's kind of chubby. So I guess we just maybe say different things, but this yeah. is kind of, it's kind of along those lines. It's like, yes, you can get big by staying leaner and taking less, but you can also get bigger faster by eating more and taking a little more. It just depends where on that risk scale you want to push it to. Yeah. But that's individual, right? And some people go, some people go way off the fucking scale and they, and they end up hurting themselves, which is probably something yeah, I did. I, I think that's where I get nervous, right? Yeah. Because I'm like, who are we talking to? Are we talking to the top 30 open guys in the world here? Or are we talking to general the general public slash gym goer slash amateur bodybuilder that's going, well, James is running the ground. I'm like, yeah. But, but listen, I think it's important to talk to everybody because all sorts of people watch this channel. So I think we're talking to everybody and we're saying, look, these are the different things that people do. And sometimes people push too far and redline their shit yeah, and, end yeah. up get, and end up getting hurt. And I use myself as that example a lot to, to prove that. But then sure. also, but also some people sometimes are too safe and they never achieve what they want to achieve. So there yeah. has, there has to be, if you want to be the best bodybuilder on earth and you're not built for it, like say a Phil Heath or a, you know, a Derek Lunsford or some of these guys or Samson, then sometimes you have to push the envelope just a little bit to get there. I do agree. I do. I, that, I'm yeah. not disagreeing on that. It just makes me nervous when we're talking on a public forum as to. I know. Oh yeah. Like num numbers uh, and shit, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's situational, right? It's it's what is your race that you're running right now? Yeah, where are you at? Are you getting ready for a first time show? Because I know there's guys getting ready for a first time show running grams of gear, yeah. which is fucking wrong. Period. But I, th but I think we do a good job, Ben. Like we have Ian on here a lot of times talking about his stuff, which is very mild. Yeah, and then and then we have me on here talking sometimes about the things I did wrong because I did go too far. So I think we have a good balance on the show of telling people the good and the bad we're not yeah. we're not sitting here going everybody should take a gram because that's not yeah. true right well listen 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 listen, listen. You, you can get to the olympia on a gram total and less because i did it this year just, yeah just and that, a heads up so and that was that was literally no bullshit yeah. so but that's what i mean that's what no I mean, no like, in, no insulin like very minimal gh yeah. just I'm so people sure out there the... know like I'm sure, like James obviously is a, is one of these examples. But of those thirty open guys, I'm sure you had guys taking astronomical amounts of injectables. But oh, equally, course. equally, I can I mean, I know three guys that were running pretty low dosages, and if that was put out in the public forum, it's called bullshit. It's yeah, called bullshit. Yeah. And, I, and yeah, now, but, 
but there's not. But what I mean is like you'll hear like somebody, oh, you have to take a trend, you have to do this, you have to do that. I'm like, no, you have to choose what's appropriate for you and run your own race. And that's why when we were talking with um, at Elite FTS, I said that's what I admire about Samson because he's never run anyone else's race. He always went, I don't like using this. I'm not going to use it. Yeah, he's very even like though that. even though the 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 general perception is well to get to the Olympia, you have to run trend you have to run halo you have to run growth high growth there's all those things that are perceived as you have to do to get to that point yeah ben i think after doing this podcast for almost three years uh i've come to the realization that you are never going to make everybody believe you and we should do when you're talking you're just talking to the people that do trust you yeah exactly no matter what i say if i say if i say my highest dose ever was a thousand milligrams of test a week there's going to be a ton of people out there like he's full of shit but there's going to yeah. be a bunch of people that do believe me. Or if, if Ian says, look, the highest test I do is five, 700. For sure, there's going to be people that don't believe him. But there's going to be a bunch of people that do believe him. And yeah. all we can do is tell people what we've done. And then it's up to them if they want to fucking believe it or not. Yeah, and the true. people the people who are doing 700 like Ian who aren't getting the results, they're going to say he's full of shit. Yeah. Because, yeah. because they don't have his genetics. So they're not getting the results. So they're like, he must be lying. But you know what? That's why I thought, fuck it, I'll just say what I'm doing. Because I'd rather just be honest. And like... yeah. If, um, you know, take that information as you will. Um, this is someone that's been competing since 2008 and 14, whatever, 30, I don't know how many years into my bodybuilding. I've done like 14 pro shows. Like, fucking hell. Like, I've been doing this a long time and I'm only like, re- and I'm still not taking the piss piss. So you don't have to take the piss piss. Um, yeah. I, I still think that's too high for majority. I think what I did last year was perfect, but I'm not going to lie. I also have goals that are laid out in front of me and they're right there. They're obtainable. And it will take a certain level of 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 pushing. Um, if, if 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 the Olympia isn't an immediate listen, if you're trying to do your first fucking show and you've never done a show before, the Olympia is millions of miles away from you. Don't yeah. look at it like if I do this, I'm gonna accelerate there. Because you won't. Yeah. Take your shit slow, man. Like I, I, I honestly, like you you don't have to more doesn't mean you get somewhere quicker. More just means maybe you've been competing longer than other people and the level that you're at. Well, I'll give you an even more you important know. thing about going fast. If you want to fuck your physique up, try going yeah, fast. Yeah, because man. everything will blow because out apart from your fucking the yeah. error. Yeah, because the error I made was trying to go faster than my body wanted to. So not only should you go slow for health reasons, but if you want to make sure you keep your lines, you don't tear any, you don't tear any muscles, your body grows properly on stage. Don't fucking rush it because if you rush it, you're gonna fuck your lines up. You're gonna get quad tears. You're gonna get, and it's. It's not the way. It doesn't work that way. You can't. That's, speed and that's it up. sad. And that's sad for everybody. That's just this. Like you know, imagine putting all your effort into something and uh, like just uh, like pushing just because of a little, a little bit of impatience, which we all have. I have it. I fucking I understand it totally. Cause some days I just want tomorrow to wake up and be ten times better. But you know, you, uh, understanding the patience is just as important in this game. Well, that's <laughs> I train. I train legs with Nick. I train legs with Nick Justice up in Ohio, and we were training. I can't remember how it came up there. He said, "Oh, like, was there any?" advice and i said one thing i'll say is allow the plateaus sometimes to settle you don't have to constantly push because he's like oh i put on this much weight in this time like cool dude just let your body you don't always have to keep pushing and pushing i'm like you're 21 22 i'm like you have time wow and we have we have the we have this mentality of oh i I need to do more if i hit that little that little hurdle or that little uh, plateau a little bit i have to then find the thing that's going to push me onto the next level i mean sometimes just let yourself bed in let your body settle pull back a little then go again you don't have to just constantly be either pushing all the way up or coming all the way down but it's good that nick has someone like you to say that to him because i think that's the error i made in my and i, I don't want to just keep going back to me that's i think the error most people make yeah is like because well, if you're a beginner you put on all this fucking weight like this yeah. and then all, and then all of a sudden you become an intermediate and that weight is harder to come by. You start like down. the progress is slower and you're like, well, wait a minute. Maybe that means I need more juice. Maybe it means yeah. I need, and, and you start making rash de- decisions yeah. instead of just being patient and working through the, yeah. through that yeah. fucking plateau. Like you said, Look, I gave him that advice through experience, not through, Oh, I know better. It was like, yeah. I've been there. I've been 21 or, Oh, like I've been pushing before and, and we talk about this, like eating like maniacs and training and just more, more weight, more drugs, more yep. food, more everything. I've been there. Yep. And it's yep. probably, I, I saw, if I go back, I go, Oh, that year to that year, 
I probably should have just 90% it rather than the 100% I was yeah. at. I should have just given myself a little bit of breathing room and I would have got a much better physique three, four, five years down the line for it. Yeah. James, what are you, uh, we'll go back to the original question we were asking. What are you doing competition wise? I don't know. I want to do the Arnold. I want to do the Arnold Classic Ohio next year. Oh, you're right. Oh, so, that's right. You're taking the year off. I forgot about that. Well, potentially. Yeah. It depends if my body, listen, if I get a good off season and my body responds and I actually make some changes, then I would do something, but I know that I have to be patient. Well, that was my question. So I was about to ask, what is it you're looking, you and Jordan, what is it you're trying to see before you go, okay, now we can consider running I don't think, show. I don't think, I think, I don't think Jordan can see what I need to see. I think only I can see it. Well, okay, what are you looking for? Um, just it's more muscularity because peaking is wrong. And Jordan and me agreed. I probably need to find a coach that's fit. Like Jordan's like, we need to get a coach in this team. That, that, that is good at peaking bodies because that's something me and him ain't got a fucking clue how to do. So that's something we've already discussed openly. We're like, okay, let's maybe look at that. But the off season so far, me and him are happy just to take control of things at the minute. And we're not trying to rush anybody to get involved or um, I, there's a certain amount of muscularity. James, it's... I got a question for you. That's actually a really interesting thing yeah. that you brought up. When someone at your level, your caliber is looking for a coach, what are you looking? Are you looking for a name? Are you looking for a strategy? Are you looking for a relation, uh, personality relationship? Like, what is it that you're looking for? when you think of like all the guys that are out there, like Chad, Hani, Aceto, like who are I'm you? I'm looking for someone who would generally want to help me because they think I'd be good under their roster and and that they would be happy to help me progress and see some potential in me. And I have faith in them. Like I enjoyed, I enjoy using different coaches and having had done over the years. Cause I think that's one of the fun parts of bodybuilding that we have. Yeah. Bodybuilding is not very flexible, but what is fun, flexible about it is your choice of learning off people. And I've always thought having a different coach, you know, for different shows is not a bad thing. In my opinion, yeah. I think that's, that's just me. I, if you want to have the same coach throughout your whole career, that's also fantastic. I yeah. am neither against any. I think if you build a great rapport with someone and you like how you do things, fucking stick to it. I think if you're someone like me that likes spice it up and just try different things so be it but what is um, the, but what is a selling point like are you like okay i like it's, it's probably their, their it's probably their fucking their um resume mm -hmm. uh, what that's, have they done that's you a know, tough how, one though that's a tough how one how well There's how some, well are they performing you could you could probably look at like four or five six coaches that all have very uh, good resumes that's why it's hard and then try and get one of them coaches when they're busy well wait a minute do, why don't do you ever work at it backwards like for example like uh you might say, I don't like working with this coach because I know he uses too many diuretics or I don't like working with this coach because I don't want to take insulin or I don't want to work with this coach because uh, his guys get too fat in the off season. Like, I, I, have... I, def I definitely look at who's who I feel has a similar mindset to me in the approach of things. Okay. Like, who do I know enough to know that if I say something to them, is isn't just garbage, like, yeah, yeah, that yeah. understands my philosophies because I'm not saying I need to coach myself and I, I am hard work, but I can identify when something for me is not correct. And I just need someone that understands the things I'm saying and is able to, you know, extract that information and do what's right with it. And I'm not saying yeah, you're not, are, you're not complaining. You're giving feedback. Yes. I am a feedback guy. I, yeah, I think yeah. I'm very, I think I'm very like Hunter. Like I've tr uh, trained around and I think Hunter gives you great feedback. So it makes you, it better for you as a coach to be able to like do your thing. I'm not someone that's just like, just tell me what to do. It's, I, I have been there before. I've done the just tell me what to do, and I've enjoyed it. I think it's very fun. That's a part of bodybuilding I really enjoy, actually, just being a robot. But I think at the point I'm at and where I'm at <coughs> mentally, I like to have some input myself. No, there, there are some things that Hunter didn't give me feedback, and we, we've had a discussion. I'm like, hey, man, like he was yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I was really, I was really struggling the last offseason with the amount of food. I'm like, you never told me that. Yeah, just say he just went, oh, I'm good. He was like, I'm good, I can handle it. And I didn't realize that he'd thrown up a couple of times. Like, he was having issues. Yeah. I mean, that, so that's the thing that him and I have fixed. I'm saying yeah. he's better at it now and he's more, he would give me a lot of training feedback. But so, sometimes with the diet, he fell into that, well, I just want to be, I just want to get everything in and do everything perfect. Yeah. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to complain. And I'm like, it's I, not complaining, I, it's feedback. I can safely say this. Every coach I've ever worked with, I've liked some aspect to their approach. Yeah. So I've, I've enjoyed the aspects. I've enjoyed Patrick's, uh, you know, straight down the middle dot you know cross your t's dot your eyes uh i've enjoyed chris aceto's um relaxed approach has helped me feel like i'm not under too much pressure but yeah everything's getting done um i've enjoyed phil viz's approach 
when Phil was doing certain things with me that I'd never done with any other people, it worked. So I do think he has a lot of merit to some of his ideas. Um, Jordan, I love that we have such great communication and that we can say anything to each other. So I found things, good things in everybody. And I'm just like, I'm not like, I'm not trying to look for someone who's an amalgamation of everybody, but I'm also keen to have uh, new experiences and hear some more insight from other people. So I worked with four coaches before I found John. Yeah. I feel like I'm like you. I like working with different coaches to get different ideas and learn different things from different people. I like wearing, I like wearing different trainers on different days. But when I when I but when I found John, I was like, he's a, he's everything. This is yeah. It's like you said. There's an amalgamation of all the coaches in one person, and yeah, we got along really well. So I was like, okay, I'm staying here. Unfortunately, yeah, maybe unfortunately, I found, yeah, unfortunately, I started working with him too late. But yeah, I mean, you'll you'll have certain relationships as well where you have a coach and an athlete that don't necessarily vibe that well, but get great results. Yeah. And then you'll get the opposite where they vibe really well. The athletes the really happy. Yeah. And, and, and they're not shit, but it's like, it's a different situation. Yeah. And that it's, it's all according to what's right for you at that point. And then figuring out within that coach, like can the coach, can the first situation build on their rapport and their relationship and improve to a point where that becomes a long-term thing. And then can the other situation figure out the whatever it might be. And, and so the result starts falling into place, but I think yeah. that's the end goal. But I think a lot of people will jump coaches before they give that an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think you guys have done, it wasn't just a one show move on, you know, no, I think yeah. a lot of guys will do that. They'll do a prep and they go, okay, that wasn't it. And, and, and with me as well, it's like, I, I wouldn't not work with the same coach again either. Sometimes I would I'd go back to certain coaches and give it another little run. Well, I, well, went, back went, to, back to, I, I went back to Chad. Yeah, and Chad yeah. worked together for two years. Then I worked with Hani, then I went back to Chad for a year. Yeah, it's really, at the end of the day, it's just, I don't know, it just depends where you are in your life. Um, so does this it. mean, does this mean the Hollingshead experimental eat everything every two days diet is no longer on the board? Well, possibly <laughs> not. If, if, if I get to the point where I need to diet and someone's, if I find something or someone that we want to work with, um, when I say we, I, I say we, and I don't mean we because Jordan's going to be like a third, hang on, but he's my friend that I will always talk to, um, which could be positive in many lights, but it can also be negative because I do believe that sometimes people, um, you know, like when a coach says something, imagine your friend being like, oh, I don't know about that. How would it make you feel? So mm -hmm. it, I try for it not to be that. Jordan's very supportive and normally more so always speaks encouraging words and he's just someone I can talk to. Um I think at the minute it's it's there's you know I've spoke to some coaches and I've had some words with some and like there's possible um opportunities but right now because where we're at because it's just off season I'm just trying to not push anything too hard on anybody and I respect everybody only has limited time and I don't expect anything for nothing you know so would we'll someone see. of your caliber ever work with somebody who is an unknown yeah I've got a friend in this country a guy called Nathaniel okay so I'm training with him tomorrow he was one of my, I helped him do his first show. Yeah. The dude now is an exceptional coach. Yeah. And yeah. he's here. He's here in person. He trains yeah. around the corner. A part of me is like, he would be fantastic because we would see each other every day. The fucker's just as strong as me now and trains like a savage, similar mindset and has done well himself. And I see how he does with his clients and he's very, very good with it. So I wouldn't write that off at all. The guy's never trained a pro in his life, but I wouldn't say no. Okay. Very, very possible that you'll hear on my Instagram in like five weeks' time I'm working with Nathaniel Heck Rules. <laughs> like, you just don't know. All right. Um... I don't, I, you've got to remember, like, and, and I've, I've spoken to Matt before. Matt said something to me, Jansen. Um, he said something. He said, you know, I wasn't always Matt Jansen, luckily because of people like who we know he's helped. They yeah. create the name. He was, he was given a chance once. And that's kind of like guys like this, for them to become the coach, you know, they have to be given a chance. Well, that's a hard thing as well when you said, hey, I'm going to judge people on their resume because a lot of times their resume doesn't always reflect their what they can do for you. Of course. Right? But, but I will say this, Ben, as well. If, if they're new, although, if there's they're no, new. although there's no, like, his resume is only, I've seen what he's done with like everyday people and I still find it fascinating and think it's incredible. Oh, so, Matt, you mean? No, no. Um, no. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, like yeah. he works with a lot of general people. And I've seen some of these yeah. people that I would never have expected to be able to transform their bodies. But he's yeah. made their approach so comfortable and easy to follow. And it's worked. So I, there's a, I respect there's a, a lot. Bunch of really, there's a bunch of really, really good 
I want to say unknown coaches because in the UK they're probably pretty well known, but over here they're not that well known. I, yeah. I think they're going to make they're going to start making a name for themselves. There's a good yeah, few yeah. of them out there. Yeah, some good British coaches around. Uh, okay, let's do some questions. Um. Uh, oh wait, Guy Cisternino has a question. Fuck Guy. If you and Guy got into a boxing ring, knowing Guy is an all-around stellar athletic specimen and could run circles around you, how many rounds would you last, and who would win, and how would it end? He wouldn't win a chicken fight. I would kill Guy in a boxing match. <laughs> let's arrange it. All he's, right, let's do got, it. I think we should he, do it. He's, he's got a disadvantage on weight, on reach, on everything. He's All fine. proceeds can go to a charity of choice. <laughs> because then everyone will get behind it. I think we should do this. <laughs> where would it be held, though? Where would be the, um, the arena? What, where, where's the place I think of we should do it. I think we should do it at Aries. Oh, yeah. a- oh Aries. the nutrition store. Aries Nutrition, Aries is opening New a Jersey. New, is opening a new location in Pittsburgh. Oh, so there. And he said it and he said it's a big store. And we're we were planning to try and be there in April. So, guy, you have one month to get yourself ready. <laughs> one month, boys. <laughs> isn't, Countdown isn't, begins. Guy, isn't guy getting ready for the Masters? Yeah, imagine that. I told him not to. I said you're gonna get killed. He ain't he doing said, the Masters, bro. He said, he said, how many? I'm like, dude, if Victor shows up, you're going to get stomped. Oh, yeah. He could put some shorts on and do the Masters. No, he can't. He's lost his back. Oh, he can't even win that now. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, guy. Wait, Sorry, wait, wait, wait. Listen, wait, I can, I can, only, I can only say this because I look like shit. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> Come on, Kamal, Kamal has to be a, a pretty fr- strong front runner for that. After seeing Victor this weekend, if Victor died... Victor's it's still fucking yeah. massive, bro. If, if, if... I, I've got a wee really quickly, but I will be right back. I got a did, you, did you talk Victor to him about it? Did I talk did to him about it? Vic. I think him and Dennis were laughing about it. We were all sitting like on the eating breakfast together. I think yeah. they were. La- I think they were laughing about it. He's not going to do it. They're not going to do it. But I mean, no. But, but come someone on, like, really? someone, someone like Phil Klahar could win that fucking show. It's yeah. they. I think they lowered it from forty-five to forty. So it's actually, I think, quite a few people who could jump in there. There's a couple of active pros that could do it. Yeah. Well, a lot of active pros could do that. Like Brandon. Brandon could do it. I think Brandon's 40. I believe so, yeah. I mean, I mean why shit, not? Brandon would be. But I, I... I mean, how... Wait, wait, wait. How old is Hattie? <laughs> I don't know. But I, I've heard two different things. Some people said that it was $230,000 just for bodybuilding. But then other people told me it was $230,000 across all classes. So if it's two hundred thirty thousand dollars across all classes, I don't think you're going to get a lot of pros coming out for that. It's not going to come out of retirement for like twenty or thirty grand. You know what I mean? No, because you got to buy thirty grand worth of GH to even get ready. That's right to catch back to build your body back up. Build your body back up. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Uh, one second. Let me see some of the responses here. Uh... By the way, Hardy's thirty-five. I just looked it up. I was younger than I thought. Yeah, he's young. Yeah, he he's, that. It's crazy, isn't it? Okay, I just have to. Respond. I take back my comment about writing him off that he can't win another one. Then, yeah, like, oops, he's he's not as old as I thought. You thought yeah. he was like forty two. I Samson, did for some reason. I thought he was up there. Is Samson now a threat to win the Olympia this year? I would say he's definitely in the conversation. You got momentum when you win an Arnold, man. Yeah. Come on. I don't see him outside oh. the top. I don't see him outside the top four, maybe top three at least. Well, I mean, look, he just beat the number three bodybuilder in the world. Uh, yeah. And, and, I, I, and, on, and he was on. He wasn't, I, on. It wasn't Nick got it wrong. I don't think that's true, Ben. You I can't think... say he was off. Wait, wait, wait. He wasn't off. But there's more than one way to be off. He was I think, different. I think Nick's best was the Olympia. I think, think... Nick, I, I think Nick's absolute best, if you want the truth, is the 21 Arnold. I love that look. He was... No, he's pro- He's posing and everything now compared to then is so much different, so much better now. No, it's better then. No, he's he's, he's doing his his side shot. His side shots this time. His side tricep is incredible. Side tricep look nothing like. It looks like he's got no waist. But he was, but he was always winning a side tricep. The front double, he stretches out now, and he was winning it last year by crunching down. So I think. Anyway, okay, so you, okay, do so you think Nick's best, previous best, wins the Arnold? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think if Nick was as full as he was at the Olympia, I have to see him next to Samson again. I do yeah. think 
I, I don't know. I can't say. I can't say that Nick was. But that's why. That, but that's why I said Samson should be. I don't see him outside the top four. No, I don't year. see. I don't. I don't think so either. Right, listen, boys. One thing. That, the only thing that matters is how do they want the judge? How do they want to judge? If it's down, yeah. like they, if they are judging the criteria they judged at the Arnold, then there's no reason why he can't win. Yeah, agree. That's it, and and, and we, that, that's just something that can change today, tomorrow, like because they're all exceptional. And if the judges say that's the look of Mister Olympia, that's the look of Mister Olympia. So he can walk away of it this year. Mm. If if that's a thing, James, if like if they're looking for a certain look, Samson has more going in his favor than anybody else. Absolutely. Because he's the most socially appealing yes. bodybuilder on that yes. stage. Uh, because if you if you ask any average person who they want to look like, they're going to say Samson or Andrew. Samson's body. Samson's body, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you put that top five up at the Arnold and p- pick their two favorites, so average Joe, they're picking Samson and Andrew. There, there's not many people to look at Samson and be like, oh, he's grotesque. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, even like women, young men, like they're all going to look at him and be like, wow, he looks fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that, that says a lot about us. if you want the bodybuilding to go in a direction, look at Chris Bumstead. Yeah, exactly. Imagine, who's the Chris Bumstead of open? Like in regards to the appeal. Well, it's those two, right? Oh, those two. Well, that's, that's, that's tricky. Physique it's wise, Sam- physique wise, it's, it's Samson. It's Samson. Yeah, but Chris brings other checks, other boxes. Of course, but Samson yeah. hasn't had a chance to really express and be in that position, has he? Agree, agree. Who knows what the future holds? Yeah. If he's yeah, Mr. Chris, Olympia, what will he what will he do with it? Chris see what had these, to win. See what, these fuck, see what these fucking people have done to me. I'm like, I'm stuck here arguing against my guy because fucking fans are like, you're so biased. So I'm like, I got no, argue. no, 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 because you have to be put in that position because it's fair as a podcast to be like not too. Do you gotta, know what I mean? I got to play devil's advocate all the time. I yeah. don't have to. I don't have to be pro Samson at all. But but yeah. I'm speaking facts. Like I am pro yeah. Samson for a reason right now. Yeah, you know because he, he proved the reason. Uh, now that we are past the Olympia and the Arnold, who's a sleeper bodybuilder that is going to shock people in 23? I think sleep, it's not really a sleep up because I think someone like Charles Griffin's going to move up nicely. I think Hunter is going to shock people this year. I think he's finally going to, I want to say, and I'm not just saying this because Ben's on the podcast. I'm saying this because of recent posts that he's made. And because I saw him at the Arnold this year and he's carrying around his food and he just looks more focused. So I'm going to say a a couple sleepers. I think think Justin will impress people. He might not like blow away his open debut, but I think he's going to really impress people when he steps on stage. And I think Hunter if he keeps on the path that he's on currently, will finally show up the pe- the way people are expecting him to show up. What do we think of um, Brett at the first his first Olympia? I think Brett looks really good. I think Brett needs still needs more size. I feel like it's, he's pretty fucking big. <laughs> it's it's deceiving though. Wait a second, and I'm going to try and be as fair as possible. Brett has a great physique. He it's very appealing to the average person. It's very aesthetic. But I feel like his lower body is, according to his last showing, his lower body is still not caught up with the width of his shoulders. Okay. okay. So if he can bring up his legs then between, yeah. between now and the Olympia, then fuck, Brett's going to be very dangerous for sure. Well, I see him. I see him beating a lot of people that were there last year. But the thing about he's... the thing about Brett's legs that is fun is interesting is they're big. But his outer sweep is straighter and doesn't volume like it doesn't. Yeah, it goes out. down and then goes around the knee. It's, yeah. It doesn't come out at the top. It doesn't sweep off the hip like a Sean Roden or something like you know what I mean. Like it goes more straight. Doesn't and I have think, like a, a, yeah, I know what you're saying. And I think because of the width of his shoulders, he, he ends up with that. Yeah. So that's I'll say I, I'm excited for Brett because I know that he he's has fucking it. switched on. I ha- he has it in there, and if anyone can make. The improvements they need to, or the improvements he needs to, it's he's got it. You know, a I, machine. wait, wait, I just thought of somebody I think is going to be fucking lights out this year. Over actually, Ooh. everybody I just mentioned, he posted some recent photos, and I was like, holy fuck. If you pull up Derek again, then I'm going to fall out. <laughs> yeah, he's a sleeper. Yeah. How would have, um, can I ask a question before we go? How would Chris O'Peak perfectly have done at this Arnold? I don't, I don't, it looks like a mash of body parts to me, man. Do you I, think Chris O would have been f- six? I think, I think Rami would have beat him. So you think Sean would have beat him? I think Sean would have beat him. 
So he's Sean would, would, would it would, would it Akeem yeah. would beat him? Maybe not Akeem. So probably the Akeem was tied to this show though. He was... But he's saying if he's saying it's a shredded Crizo. He's not saying the yeah, Crizo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even the Crizo that went how he looked at Olympia, which was pretty fucking good. I thought just the tab was a bit shit. It would be him and Akeem somewhere in there, in my okay. opinion. But I, I, I just. I'm I not... felt like because of his height, I felt I felt like it would have been a good match up at this Olympia just to see him, Andrew, and Samson. Where do you think he would have been? I don't know. I, that's why I would have liked to have seen it just because of their height. But imagine if he was there. What do you think? Um, like I say, I think it'd be really hard to beat Sean. So you think you would have been like six? Probably. Uh, ben, what do you think? Realistically. Yeah, somewhere. Sean's so I'd, complete. I'd say in between Akeem and Sean. Do you think Sean should have beat Rami? It's hard not on the sad, not on the Saturday night. They're I feel like they were. I feel like they were really even in their own. I ways. think you could have had them. You think you? I think you could have had Sean ahead on Friday night, but I think Rami was considerably better on the Saturday night. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to show you guys, and you guys are probably. I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to be the only person that feels this way, but. Uh, Baruz is. Oh no, Baruz is crazy. Yeah, he's extremely yeah, impressive. Dude, he beat. Oh, he this beat isn't. Brittany. I don't think that's. I think that might be a throwback. If his legs keep growing, I feel like his shape is fucking crazy. He's got really good shape, and he like I'm not seeing what you see, dude. Look at this. Are you crazy? Look at that shot. Look at the X frame on him. His fucking legs meet. He does I know, but how he, how, he how, how tall is he? How big? How heavy is he in this? Like he was two fifty five or something like that on stage when he beat Brett, and he was peeled. Do you, do you know what would be a good matchup? Huh. Him versus Brando. Brando, yeah, I was thinking that. I really, imagine really, them, I really imagine like them two going toe to toe. I feel like Baruz is a crazy physique, man. He just needs a little bit more sweep on the quads. Yeah, but he gets super fucking peeled. And look at these shots. Like arms are great, mm-hmm. lats are great, small fucking waist. The legs are thick from the inside. He just needs a little bit more out here. I'm but a fan. It, and he gets crazy condition. He's peeled. Because to beat Brett is hard, and, and the only way he did really do that is because he even outdone Brett on that. He just Brett's needs, tight. He needs a little bit more quad to really be competitive. But, like, look at the sweep and the hamstring is good. Wait, wait, wait. Where are we talking competitive? You're doing top 10? Yeah, top 10, I think. I think he'd he push really? Raph. Think he I think him and, I... him and Raph would have a right battle, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. I think be he a good could battle. Be, I think he'd be maybe between I'm 10. Missing. I think he could maybe be between... No, You've no, seen well, him that's... in shape, Ben, haven't you? If you look at him in shape... I think he's between 10 and 15, in my opinion. Have you got a um, picture of him in shape at the last show, the Romania that he won or whatever it was? Yeah. He looks fucking nuts, bro. That's By the way, I'm not saying he's bad in any stretch here. I'm just talking the, to... I mean... I, he's got, got to be, yeah. Hamstrings are strong. Talking about him in the top 10, I'm not sure I see it. He looks more impressive on stage, Ben. Once you see him next to other guys, you're like... Look at him there. Look at him there. Ah! <laughs> Look, look at that! that. Look at yeah, that. no, I, I remember. I do remember this. I mean, that's not a straight stage shot, right? That's no, no. It's stage. filtered, but still, I think he was like 250 pounds in this condition. Yeah, he's got big glutes. I'll tell you that. He's like a big old ass boy. Look Here's with Bre- Brett out. I mean, look. If you're saying Brett is a standout, then you have to say Baruz is a standout because he looks just as good. Yeah, it's the clavicle width. I think I'm not impressed by. He's wider than Brett. Yeah, but I think Brett has narrow clavicles on his yeah. well, he hits certain shots. He has certain shots that make him look narrow. Like the most muscular yeah. Brett looks narrow, I feel. This dude's good, man. I rate him. I'm, I know why you yeah, I, I get why you're behind him. Because I think that shape's just marvelous. Look at that. That reminds me of Dean Dean White's front double. Yeah, it's beautiful. He just like his like I said, his legs need a little bit more volume and then you get it. He's hitting true condition though, isn't he? True condition. Oh, rem- yeah, he was. He's I remember down, what actually. I remember when him and Brett competed. I was like, I think me and Ian were talking about. We're like, they almost have similar strengths and very, similar, yeah. very similar. Yeah. On stage, it was very similar. Yeah, he was true. that. He was that little bit more old school conditioned. You know, that sucked in drier look, but not I thought, quite as poppy. I, I thought he was a little bit bigger than Brett when they were on stage against yeah. each other. Brett was a little bit more round, I thought, like uh, plush muscle, like younger muscled. There he is next to Roman. I mean, just the frame on him is fucking nuts. And there's um, uh, Enrico as well on the far left. Yep. Hoffman. Hoffman's. Anyway, look, oh. I'm not saying I'm not saying in that 
current shape that he's going to destroy everybody. I'm saying with Watch that out. with that frame, if he can add muscle to it, that's a it's a beautiful structure, man. It's a hell, hell of a hell of a structure. Yeah. But you said he could beat everyone that we just mentioned, and we've mentioned some pretty big fucking. Well, names. he already beat he already beat Brett. I think him and Justin would be a good matchup. And I mean, Justin's going to go on stage probably around 235, 240, maybe 235. This guy's going on you stage. See, do, you, do you see Justin at the Olympia this year? I, I don't know. I, I, I do. I do. It's yeah. going to be, I think it's going to be tough for him. If he goes on, I think you said he was 215 at his opener or at, at his pro, at what do you guys, pro card. Yeah. I think if he's put on 20 pounds, which is generous. Which yeah. is which is generous. That puts him at two thirty to two thirty five. If he's two thirty to two thirty five, even with great shape, it's going to be hard for him standing next to somebody like Hunter or somebody who weighs two fifty to sixty and, and has that same good shape. Yeah. Holy shit! So so it's going to be it's going to depend on it's going to be lineup dependent. I think it's very lineup. Yeah. <laughs> like if Sergio if Sergio jumps into Chicago if he gets out of jail. Then uh, yeah. you, you know Sergio will be tough. If Hunter shows up in Tampa, that'll be tough. If Ian shows up, that's going to be tough. So like Justin's got an uphill climb, but Ian's going to look very good this year. But uh, my faith is like. in my faith is in Justin down the road. I think he's yeah, a, yeah. he's got such yeah, a yeah, long, long 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 term. I think he's got such yeah, a he's phenomenal too, shape. If he's if he's two forty five peeled, jeez. Yeah, Justin Justin in another year or two. Is going to be fucking really hard to beat for people, man. Yeah, um, yeah I see that. So yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, who on the podcast? What about, what about Neil? Can you mention Neil? I'm going to put Neil in an open show. Fuck oh, it. Look at the- oh yeah, we got Neil coming in, didn't we? Throw <laughs> nicely. This guy's. I love this guy's fucking attitude, man. This guy. So he said he puts a picture up, James, and uh, he's like 261 or something like that in the picture he posted. Yeah. Yeah. So I talked to him and I said, Hey man, do you mind if I post this photo? Cause you'd look fucking nuts. And he's like, yeah, sure. It's no problem. He's like, but I'm going to be uh 270 by the end of the week. Yeah. Do you want <laughs> to like, wait for that uh, one? And I'm like, no, you're not. So he, fucking, that... he posts a photo like a few days later. He's like 270. I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, he's these just... guys are getting heavy. I tell you. I'm Dude, like, he does... This guy is a fucking animal. Like, look at this is 270 pounds on the mark. Okay. So it's me about proportions now and x ray and shit. His waist is still good. <laughs> All right. But because, like I said, I have to play devil's advocate and I can't be biased to my own guys because everybody knows Neil's a hostile athlete. I think the only thing is he needs to bring up the hamstring to really start killing people, maybe a little bit more back. Like this needs yeah. to ma- this needs to match yeah. the quad and then it's yeah. da- and it's more dangerous. Yeah. He'll get it. He's got to work right, isn't he? That's it's his a- weakest shot. This is the only area I see. Like, even his back is good. It could be thicker, but, like, this area here needs to really, like, come up. Yeah. But he's fucking crazy, man. It's going to be really interesting to see him next to... next to. Look at that. Fuck me. That's yeah, from crazy. the front. Look, from the front, he's fucking phenomenal. It's the way the lats pop through. They look nice. Yeah. Yeah, look at that fucking fullness in here. It's nuts. He's got, exa- he's got Rafa's midsection there. <laughs> Mm. looks like but i just can't believe the rate in which he's growing like look this was 267 and then the next picture is 271 i wish i I was growing that fucking fast (laughs) jesus christ i'm you know what's interesting is he's not pounding it's not a stupid amount of food or drugs look at you can tell for for people who don't know ben's coaching him but you can tell when somebody doesn't belong in a certain class this is him in classic you the see how actually crazy. No, but you, you see how you see how depleted the muscle looks, especially yeah, on top, yeah, 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 yeah. top off. Especially. It's like it, it's just you can't force yourself into a class that you don't belong in. Now look at him here. Yeah. It's like holy Chest. shit. He lost his whole upper body. Yeah, like all of this looks like uh amateur quads look pro, but over yeah. here, over here with everything filled out, it looks well, yeah. Fuck man, that's great. Good progress, lad. Yeah. Solid. Um, all right, we'll do a few more. Uh, when guys get into a prep, is there a mental switch that flips? If so, explain how personally that worked for you and how it affected those around you. My switch just seems to be broken. <laughs> uh, I I had a switch that flipped. I used to, the whole last week before I started to prep, I would eat as much junk food as I could. 
<laughs> get it all out of my I would eat everything I could think I wanted. Like I would get McDonald's, I would get pizza, I would eat ice cream, I get everything out of my system. And then yeah. the minute the, the minute the prep switched, it was like that's it. So you uh, start prep next week then? I started today. I ran I, I I went for a run today and I had like a very clean breakfast. So we'll see. So yeah, the switch, know. the switch, it, it depends, isn't it? Like some shows more than others. It just depends. I don't know if there's a, you know, it's a situational thing, I think. Yeah, but do you ever ease into a diet or is it just like, okay, I'm dieting, that's it? No, I kind of, I never come out of a diet really. So it's hard so to say. When I was younger, I used to do the, the eat more shit in the off season and then just switch. But now I'm like kind of, I always eat clean. So it's like, I don't yeah, know, I'm let, dieting anyway. Yeah, I can see that later on. In my so it's more, so I have to, me- I have to mentally switch though more than physically, but yeah, I don't know. Comes and goes, bro. Like some, the biggest switches are when I've got reason, purpose. You know, like when's. So I hate to say it, it's always off the back end of some sort of hardship that I have the best switch. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Same here. Just use it, didn't you? So yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I think I think how, defining it as a switch. To me, it's more, it's too black and white, right? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to encourage a lot of my guys to never fully switch off. They're not, like, don't, the guys are too good now. The guys are too consistent now. Mm. You know, they they can't switch off. You have have the Nick Walkers of this world who are fucking relentless and they're not going to let up and they're going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. I don't don't mean like pushing hard. I just mean working hard. They're going to keep working working hard. their Their head is always on. Like, they're always in. I've got to get on that Olympia stage in November. I've got to like, they're always yeah. aware of that. I wish I was more like that. I wish I was more like that. I think, um, I think all that's individual. I think there are guys who can switch off and switch on and still be phenomenal bodybuilders. And I think there are guys who have to be on all the time to be phenomenal bodybuilders. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think, I it's think not everyone's I, way. I think everybody's different, man. I don't think everybody could be like, like Nick. I think certain but guys. I think, would, I think certain guys would get burned the fuck out if they were like Nick. Mm. You need time to to. I think some guys need time to decompress, to like live life, to to take a little bit of pressure off themselves. Like look at Samson. Samson's a perfect example. Yeah, he does his breaks, then he goes for his trips with uh, Mel. Samson has Nick like Nick. a Samson has like a day a week where he takes Mel and they go to a park or something or. They go somewhere with their dog and like just take take a fucking log off the fire, you know, like take a little bit of pressure off, and then yeah. and then he switches it back on on Monday. So I think not everybody can be full tilt all the time, or just it's not going to work for them. Yeah, this is too much pressure. I think you just burn out. It's just like your brain, your brain can only take there's so not, much force intensity. If it's like... there's, there's not many guys I know like Nick. Like I think of Nick, I think of Ian, but that's why I called Nick. I think he's the best in the world. In terms of his discipline, year round. I, th- like, I, I also think I, an age, but, I think I think a lot of it's an age thing as well. But wait a minute, is it discipline or is it like just because somebody takes a day off, it doesn't mean they're less disciplined? It could be no. Plan, it could be as plan, part of their, be a, that's part of it's planned. That's, you know, part that's of this part of their that's part of their strategy. They need a day for their body and mind to recover, and then they're back yeah. on. You know what I mean? Oh, but that's there's, what I mean. there's, there's, there's a, a relentlessness to. I don't think Nick needs that. He doesn't allow that. He's like, I'm just gonna. I, I respect it. I'm not saying it's right yeah, or wrong. Yeah, I, I just that's I think that's him. You know, he's that's never his, that's, that's his approach. Respect. Listen, yeah. it's a, it's a hundred. It's a hundred percent something to respect. And I think I think of him. I think of Ian. Ian has that same, you know, all day, every day kind of attitude. Yeah. Um, but I just think the reason the only reason I'm saying anything is I've seen a lot of great bodybuilders that don't have that. I've yeah. seen a lot, a lot of great bodybuilders that do have an off on switch. Yeah, they like, you know what I mean. They can, okay, now it's time to work. Now it's time to break, and they can, yeah. they can cycle through them. Um, if you could start your life again at twenty, what would you do different? Ah, oh, I don't know. Really, I try and get better at bodybuilding a bit quicker so I can retire fucking earlier. I'd save more money. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't blow as much cash on dumb shit. Yeah, I've I've bought a load of shit I don't need. I agree. Skates, bought twelve pairs last year. I spent so much money on oh. Uber, on Uber Eats. Uber Eats. I've done a lot of Deliveroo here. That's the same. <laughs> I bought this the other day, and this this cost me a lot, and it's not even made of anything decent. I thought it was going to be something fucking. What is it? Why'd you buy it? 
Story in the Eights. Ah, oh, it is. Huh. It looks okay. like it's like made of some good metal, and it's not. It's like three D printed plastic. Oh, it's yeah. You can see. It's so like... I'm pissed, mate. I'm pissed. <laughs> Waste of money. That's four hundred quid. What? Yeah, you paid four hundred fucking pounds for that? I think so. Oh, oh shit, shit, James. That's what you call spunking that's your money. Like, that's like what six hundred and fifty, seven hundred dollars. That's that's like three boxes of GH, man. What the? F- Why would you buy that for seven hundred dollars? Because I was just like, I wanted something nice, and I thought it's going to weigh a bit and be heavy, and it's not. I'm disappointed. <laughs> sign it, sign it, and put it up in your stories for sale. No, honestly, yeah. it looks great, and it is a good. Like the product is amazing, but I did think it was going to have a bit of weight to it. So if someone broke your mouse, I can knock them out with it. Things, things feel better when they got a bit of weight to them. Yeah, like, like I can keep it by the you know bedside, and if a thief breaks in, I can smash him around the fucking face with this heavy ass statue of Dorian Yates. But you need to get a brass. I get a brass that, version of it. Now, you you hit someone around the head with that, it's going to bounce straight off. Yeah, it's just plastic. Um, ketchup on eggs. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You yeah, fucking mad. If you don't have ketchup and eggs, you can fuck right off. Well, you just told that's for Ian then. Ian, you can fuck right Does off. You know, <laughs> Ian, I don't care if you're big. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> don't give a fuck. You can't have eggs with no ketchup on eggs is an absolute necessity. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait, unless it's a boiled egg and you've got soldiers. No, in. you can't do ketchup on dippy boiled eggs. eggs. No. You can do dippy egg and then you're good, but no ketchup. You're good. I can't do ketchup on boiled eggs. It's got to be scrambled I mean. or, yeah. you know, Oats. sunny stuff. Yeah, something like that. I love that. I, when I was in America, I was like, I don't know how to explain how to have my eggs because you guys say sunny side up. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why? What do you guys say? I don't know. We don't say, we don't have, we don't say like anything. So it's like, how do you want your eggs? eggs? And you just go silent. You just go. <laughs> No. Out of the shell. Wait a yeah, minute. No, uh, there is no Wait, term. If you're in England and you're ordering breakfast, and you, you say, say I, you say I want three eggs, and they say, how do you want them? They'll say you say poached or scrambled or yeah, but or... Po- poached is not sunny side up. Poached is different. No, no, I know. So they, we have no explanation for sunny side up. So nobody, nobody eats them there like that. Yeah, that's a fried egg, isn't it? But it's fried underneath and it's soft on top. Yeah, yeah, it's just a fried egg. So we would just say so a fried it... egg. But then oh, you have okay. over easy, which is then the same thing, but then flipped, so it's yeah. cooked a little bit on top. Yeah, yeah, we don't have that, so here you can't even ask. And you have over medium. Yeah, we can't even do that in a restaurant, a cafe or restaurant. No one. By the way, anyone, that. anyone has eaten over medium fried egg is sick in the head. Fuck you, Ben. <laughs> oh, do you like them over over medium? I like a little bit runny, but not a lot runny. That's no, you medium. need a lot runny. You need a lot runny. No, I don't want it like I don't want it like raw. I want it a little bit cooked. I like them a little bit, yeah. Because if it's raw, you know, you get that sinewy white shit. No, that's what I mean. Over, over easy, they flip it and it cooks that just, bit real quick. Just cooks then... enough. Okay, that's yeah. what I had this morning on toast. I had that on toast and steak this morning because Brant said you need to eat more steak. You're a pussy. I don't when have I was... to have. I don't have to have ketchup if I have over easy because I just dip my toast in the egg and I don't. True. Need ketchup. True. S- scrambled always have to have ketchup. So you're putting ketchup on your eggs because you overcook your eggs. Is what you're saying. No, I don't overcook my eggs. When I scramble my eggs, they're a little, they're a little runny still, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when you can put a bit of butter and a bit of milk in there, and then it's oh, that's better in it. Way better. I made my, I made my eggs with butter for the first time ever, like two years ago, and I was like, holy never, fuck, I've been missing never that. going back. Yeah, never going back. It's a different meal. It's a different food. It's just like fuck that. It's, it's like a protein shake with milk. <laughs> it's a different meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know when you have a protein shake with milk, it's like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Fuck. That's exactly the exact. That's the Fuck, exactly man. the the it's comparison. Like the way. Yeah. <laughs> I w- I was making I was making tea for the longest like British builders tea for the longest time with almond milk. It's not and the then when my dad came, I started using normal milk. I'm like, "Fuck almond milk!" Yeah. You piss right off. I'd rather not drink it than have cow's... shitty watery. You need yeah. You need yeah. cow's milk, bro. Yeah. Uh... Dairy. Had, now that you're retired and slimmed down, do you miss being very big or is it a relief? Uh, I like being smaller everywhere except for the hour in the gym. I'm yeah, bodybuilding shows. Uh, no, I don't care. About, I don't care about my, bodybuilding I didn't shows. Like I would, no, I would like that. at bodybuilding shows, I don't care. I'm like, I'm retired. I own a business. I don't give a fuck. Only yeah, time, yeah. the only time I want to be 300 pounds and fucking in the gym. tossed up is the one hour when I'm in the gym. When you're when you're under the bar squat and you're like, God damn it. <laughs> I, I had uh, I had someone come up to me and be like, bro, I saw you last year here because I went in early last year for the Arnold with Brett. And they were, 
oh, you were here in Powerhouse. I saw you there, and you were, you were so wide back then. I'm like, yeah, fuck off. Like, it's a backhanded compliment, kid. Like, I appreciate it, but fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the worst, Ben, is, is when you're still, you're not retired yet, and you still get that, comp- that fucking conversation. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you turn up, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, we, we trained back that Saturday when we did that yeah. lift thing. And Dom's there, and I'm like, Dom Nichols, I mean, he's all, like, ready to go, you know. He's, yeah, he's crazy. He's young, he's young, excitable, and full of spunk, and the kid's in there, like, moving weight. And I'm like, oh, I wish I was 15 years younger again. Yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't give us care, in the, care well, in the fucking world. It's all yeah, go, just, go. Yeah. just point me in the direction of the wall and tell me to run through it, and I'll do it. But that's... What was, everyone's, what was everyone's first job? Uh, upholstery. They used to upholstery. Delivery. Delivery boy. You were delivered. What did you deliver? Actually, that was my second job. Pizza. What was your first job? Chef. Chef. Like actual chef? Like actual? As a sous chef, yeah. <laughs> so I was a shoot. Yeah. I was a sous chef up until I went to college and then what, university. And then where that was so busy, I didn't have time to work fucking 11 hour days. So I then became a delivery driver on the side in the evenings. James, you said upholstery. You, I was going to do a racist joke. I was going to do a racist joke. I was going to, I was going to say, and that was the birth of PF Changs. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I just, I, I was know, just there. I, you, I know you like PF Changs. So does so does Yeah, uh, I love PF Changs. It's good. It's good. I just wanted to get that in there. I had. They had one in. Planet, they had one in Planet Hollywood. And you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go to PF Changs today because you said that. I thought you was on a diet, bro. I am. They have. Clean, <laughs> they have clean food there. Bit of the oh, old uh, pickled pickled ginger. Uh, I'll get sushi. I I count that's that not clean. diet food. You're not having that as. Diet food. <laughs> I'm just gonna outwork the food intake. Exactly. <laughs> You're gonna walk there. I'll walk. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll pull a Lee Priest. Yeah. Um, what upholstery? What did you do? Build upholstery? Carry upholstery? No upholster. So I was upholstering in furniture. So like old antique chairs and stuff that needed to be reupholstered. They'd you be did delivered. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do that with a gentleman that lived down my road who owned his own business. So you'd reupholster them and then you'd deliver them. Yeah, and then send them back or put them in antique. They were like, sometimes it was an antique shop that bought an old piece of it, like an old item, and then they want it reupholstered to sell. Mm. And we'd replace them with like original looking leather and like let's say beading and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that for a, a while. I was a dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where at? Uh, a pizzeria, and then it was like a pizzeria well, slash, I remember, sl- I, I, slash I remember restaurant. You- and then they didn't let me take a break one night because I worked the midnight shift. So everybody used to take a break at four in the morning. Yeah. There was nobody in there. And they're, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take my break. There's like, you, no, don't take a break. Go in the back and work. And I'm like, I quit. I'm out of here. Fuck you. See ya. Fuck that. <laughs> so, so, I, take one. I went through so many jobs. <laughs> yeah, Cause you can't work for people, bro. If it was, it was no, like if it was, it's a good thing. Bodybuilding came around. Cause I would have never fucking been able to find same, a place to work. Same. I can't yeah. do it. I've never been able to pull off a nine to five properly. Yeah. Yeah, I've been through so many fucking jobs, man. I used to do removals, and I'd just, like, hide in the toilet and eat salmon for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I, I didn't do no work. I had, I, I hid in the bathroom a lot, too. Is yeah, lot? man. <laughs> Always. Uh, okay, who in the group is most likely to franchise a Planet Fitness gym? Guy. Just think about it. It's Guy, because he will... He, no, no, no. Yeah, no, it is Guy. It is Guy. Because he was like, you know what? My time's done in bodybuilding. I don't give a fuck. I just want to make my money. I don't think any of us would. I wouldn't count I wouldn't count him out. Huh. Yeah, I, don't I can see Guy being like Ben Stiller in Dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I can see it. I feel like he'd have this gym chain and go in there and shout at everybody and be like, stop dropping your weights. Do it over there. You know, do it to the side. I think of the whole group is probably the most likely, but I don't think any of us are gonna. No, I, I, I I agree, I agree, I agree. Let's see what he says if he answers. Oh, okay, so you've actually hit him up. Okay, you go fuck off. Uh, Hey, what's going on? Would you ever uh, open a Planet Fitness? A chain. Fuck off. Yeah, you would probably, right? No, why? Why? Yeah. To make money. No. <laughs> he says no. He's, He's talking shit. shit. 
If, if he was think... making him money, if he was promised a good... James rate, thinks you're on. full of shit. A Planet Fitness, like the ones in the States where, like, you can't yeah. put more than, like, two plates on the bar. Yeah. Like, you can't anyway. What if it, if you were guaranteed to make 100 grand a year off it, would you do it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 100 grand. Guaranteed to make a hundred grand off it. Hundred fifty. No, I wouldn't. No. Oh, we thought way too long about he that. Way too long. More than a hundred for me to actually a, a, a gym like that. Hundred ten. Was against like everything. Like, like, hundred five. Yeah. Huh? Hundred and five. James said or Ben said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These guys don't believe you, but well, I, yeah, I don't. no, none of us would. But James said you would. Out of all the people you know, I gotta get thrown like that to the wolves. Well, you know I'm doing that, bro. Okay, guy, I'll call you later. I'll call you later. Love you, bro. Bye. <laughs> He's hilarious. <laughs> He took too long to answer, like Ben said. There I was think a lot so of too. When he, when we said hundred grand, he was like, he was for sure going to do it. He's like, ah. guy has a guy has a price for everything. Uh, do you think if Samson didn't get to stand next to Rami at the O, he would be where he is today? Yeah, I don't think so. I think he's implying that because that Samson that comparison helped him. Yeah, I mean. Maybe. I mean, it helped to stand next to Mr. Olympia and compare so well. Yeah. It's actually what Phil said on Sunday night to him. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. He said, what you did at the Olympia, aren't you this title here? Yeah. I want to say that actually, before we carry on, uh, James, you should have seen, we were sitting at, uh, we we're at Mitchell Steakhouse. We had a private room in the back. It was just like a hostile dinner. Yeah. And uh, I think Phil was there with his wife and a couple other people. And he went, he ran to the bathroom and the bathroom's not far from the private room. Yeah. So I think he must have saw Samson because Samson was sitting in the line of sight of the door. Yeah. So Phil came in the room and Samson stood up to say hello and obviously out of respect. And it was so cool to see. It was like, because the table was shaped in like a U pattern. Yeah. And it was like, kind of the younger hostile athletes were over here. I was sitting in the middle and then like Samson was over here with Ben and <clears throat> Phil comes in to talk to Samson. He's basically congratulated him and like told him like how good he looks and what he has to do and what he should expect. And like, just kind of like a mentor moment. Yeah, of course. But it was very like, uh, passing down the guard almost like, yeah. And Samson was like kind of blown away. Cause Phil was like, it's Phil one of his fucking heroes, right? Because that's when, yeah, yeah. when Samson got into the sport, it was Phil was the guy. Phil was dominating the Olympia, yeah. It was so, very cool. It was very cool yeah. to have seen. And all of us, all of us kind of just, we were all talking. Felt and it, a bit of it as well. Yeah, 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 but all of us were talking, shooting shit. Samson walked in, everybody was like, not a peep. Yeah. We're like, okay, yeah. Phil's talking. Everybody shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> listen to these words of yeah. wisdom. But he gave him like yeah. a really, really good kind of a, I don't want to say a pep talk, but it was more of a mentor talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, 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 but to that, he acknowledged what Samson did at prejudging on the Olympia stage. Yes. He was like, you fought your way into that yeah. next to Rami and this. And he goes, that and that's carried, carried over to yeah. the momentum carried. Yeah. It's almost like the Arnold and the Olympia are part one and part two, isn't it? Yeah, I, I just think people say judges aren't, they're not like swayed by anything and they're like, it's almost like they're not human. I, mean, I don't know if that's true, man. I think I think when if, there's an, if there's an energy, there is yeah. definitely sway, sway. That's what I mean. I don't think they're like literally looking at comments and stuff, but I think no. you can feel the the, the, the right aura. person. Yeah, the aura of the of the community of the bodybuilding community. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think Samson got a fucking huge bump out of that out of that Olympia appearance, and and Phil's yeah. right. I think it carried over to the Arnold, and that that momentum carried him over. Definitely. Anyway, anyway, so thank you to Phil. It was fucking huge. Uh, for him to do that. And I and then I left the I actually left the room and went and met talked to Phil for a minute and I I thanked him for that because I was like, hey man, that's like a sometimes I wonder if 
like someone like Phil knows the what impact it means to the people. The impact he's having on someone like Samson, right? Because Samson's 30, 36 years old. He's not he's not, yeah, he's not spring chicken. Yeah, he's not twenty two, yeah. but just yeah. in but in bodybuilding years, I think Samson's still fresh. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think that I think that whole room went, Oh, I'm a little bit more fired up now. For whatever we were doing, where like yeah. you're retired, I'm like I'm not competing. Yeah. But it, it didn't it didn't motivate me to get on stage, but it motivated me to Motivate yourself in way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's... for me, it didn't motivate me. What it did was show me a side of Phil that I hadn't seen. Yeah, I've never, but... I've never, I've never seen that side of Phil because Phil keeps a lot of his personality close to the chest. Yeah, and I and I think for him to come in that room and express himself like that when nobody asked him to, he didn't know we yeah. were there. It was totally unplanned. Was like a, a something I had never seen from him, and I was like, "That's really fucking awesome." Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's come back around because I saw him do that, and I gained more respect I, as a competitor, as a physique. I love his like; it's one of the best ever, obviously. Yeah. But the the respect I gained in that moment of him, oh yeah, fed me, fed all the way back around to making me more motivated in what I'm doing as well. Like it, it just came full circle again, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was cool to see. Um, okay, we'll do a couple more, and then we'll go. <laughs> who has the single most dominant mandatory pose today in the IFBB? It didn't say what pose though. Yeah, a like pose, any of any of the mandatory poses. This a pose that when they hit it, no other competitor stands a chance. Probably front double with someone like Derek, isn't it? I'd say Andrew's front lat spread is pretty fucking lights out. I think the front double of Derek's more lights out. Yeah, with that vacuum and the yeah. Andrew's exceptional as well, but, but I think. But then again, you know, like Ben said, like his quads aren't always right up to par yet, so maybe not. But it is a really. Matches, matches, but it is a really legs up. I but still ben, think it's lights out even with those quads. That's the I craziness. Think, I think James is right because because I, I remember Ben. We were sitting in that fucking auditorium. You're right. At the Olympia, and when he pulled up for that front double, the whole crowd fucking went ape shit. Yeah. It was like a totally <laughs> totally different fucking energy. Yeah. It's like how Ronnie's back double was back in the day. You know that whole. I'm trying to think shot. of. I'm trying to think of the most dominant mandatory pose that nobody could beat anybody in. I think Ronnie Coleman's back double, like you just said, James. Like who's yeah. better? Who has a better yeah. back double? Yeah, no. those long, long ass shredded glutes. Yeah, no. The fucking yeah. peaky biceps. No. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. If you guys have st- uh, nope. Mm, nope. Nope. Rather fight a grizzly on land or an alligator in the water. Uh, so, yeah, water's just terrible, bro. We can't do shit in water. Oh, you're fucked either way. What are you gonna do? No, you, you might be able to like, run more, and climb a tree. I have more chance running on land than I do swimming in water. You think you're gonna? You think you're gonna outrun a fucking bear? No, but I'd rather do that than out swim a alligator or crocodile. Well, I'll give how you that. F- Wait, how fast is a bear? Here's the other thing. I think it's like if 40 miles an hour, James. Oh, I, oh yeah, they're, they're quick. Here's the other thing. If, if I'm going to die either which way, I'd rather die on land and not drown in the midst of it all as well. 40 yeah. kilometers. Sorry, 56 kilometers okay. for a brown, a brown bear. Yeah, yeah, but, they 40, yeah. 56 brown bear. but they can't sidestep as quick as me. <laughs> you can just keep sidestepping and then it'll be fun. I'm, I'm, I'll go left and right. I, I do want to say a, a, an alligator or a crocodile, I can't remember which one, could swim like 20 kilometers an hour or yeah, twenty, or, or it was 20 miles an hour. It's fast. Have you seen how, quick, problem? see how quick hippos can move on see, land? The thing, is, the thing is, I think you would die a lot faster with an alligator because it would fucking grab your face and it would just pull you under the water and you would die. Whereas a bear is going to like eat your stomach while you're alive and shit. I don't want to go through that, man. Can you? Can you? Bears. Can you, bears are you, one of the bears are one of the few animals that don't kill their prey before they eat it. Just beat up. Can you so, get like an alligator in a nose lock? I would rather try and yeah. punch. I would rather try and stiff stiff arm a fucking alligator. <laughs> I'd try and it's like, a dinosaur. Get my it's hand a dinosaur. It, you know, an alligator. It's a fucking dinosaur. You're but it only has. But it only has. But it only has one weapon: the mouth. Mouth. The bear's got fucking claws and fucking arms. Mouth, and shit. Mouth. mouth. It's like if you try and I, block it, you're gonna die. You're done. Yeah, bears. A bear is way more dangerous. But I think if I could outmaneuver either one, I could have better chance of outmaneuvering a bear on land than a crocodile in water. This I is, would shit this, myself, this, bear, the, only, bro. the only caveat to me is: is it clear water or murky water? 
Yeah, because if you can't see what you're doing. I don't, well, I, or the only thing that matters for is, am I going to drown in clear or murky water? But even no, because if, it, if it's drown, clear, if it's clear water, then see I can it. see. I can see what I'm doing. You're like, as it goes to bite you. <laughs> oh, really? Your vision is what's going to hold you back from beating the fucking alligator. James, James got it right. <laughs> you got to get the nose. You got to hold the nose. Because you hold nose their, their their bite downwards is very strong, but upwards is not. So you could actually potentially hold the nose. Yeah. For how long? Well, that's, that's <laughs> you've got to let go. Let's go. Yeah, well, like, if I could it. drag it, if I could drag it over to land, well, you're gonna noogie it. Like, yeah. No, but if you could drag it over to land, then you could run Guillotine. away. Guillotine. Yeah. Guillotine it. Yeah. I agree with James. The yeah. bear. You, 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 you ain't doing no UFC gonna, moves on a bear. Dude, no, bear, I'm gonna take some. I'm gonna roll out the way. I'm gonna duck and dive. You're gonna right. go like this to block the bear's claw, and it's gonna shred your forearm. Your arm will I am not. No. no, no. I'm not going to try and block a fucking bear. I'm going to try and dodge it. I'm not going to try and like... You're going to run. Take, I'm not covering up and trying to absorb a hit from it. Like, but you're no. going to try and run. It's going to catch you and then scrape all the skin and muscle off your back. No, because it, it, there's no while, way. While it's, it's gonna eating you. Like that. It's there's start, no way. It's going to start no eating. It stop. It, it's going to eat your asshole while you're alive. <laughs> I don't believe that it can stop and change direction as quick as I can. You're fucking know. retarded. It'll go up his back feet and just go. <laughs> Oof. Here, let's yeah, look how slow that was. Bear will fuck you up, bro. Here, let's. See. I'm You're getting right. fucked. Uh, I'm getting fucked either which way. Right? Don't be wrong. I'm gonna die. But I'm gonna. Bears. Bears are just look. They, we're gonna see some like nature footage now, and we're gonna be blown away by the bear. Here, watch. Here we go. Let's watch the bear. The porcupine look. caribou herd is. Porcupine and herd. Look at this. Lit. This bear's about to chase. This bear's seen you, Ben. It's seen you, and it's coming. That's a bear. Is that a baby one? Or is that... Yeah, what the fuck? That's not, good. That's not very that's impressive. A, that's a little tiny bear. Well, it's right here. Yeah, but watch it, wait, it, just says, it just says hunt. It doesn't say catches and kills. He obviously misses. <laughs> Carry on. Prove my argument. Look, I'm just going to dodge that fat fuck. Look at him. It's not doing too good, this one. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> this carry, carry on. Let's carry on playing. Yeah. Give might it up, gone back. Might, might have been the wrong video, James. No. <laughs> oh, no, he's looking right there. Look. There you go. That's the bear walking away because I outrun it. Look at this. I, right. I fired. I got wind. Sorry. Oh, oh. Fuck that, dude. Are you crazy? No, a little a little shimmy to the left. and Look at That's what it's going to do to you when it catches you. With an agile mother bear. Look. It's literally going to bear hug you. Look at Ben. That thing's alive right now. Are they friends or is that actually killing it? No, it's killing it. They fr- what do you mean? Are they friends? Well, they were like animal friends. <laughs> That's terrifying. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. It'll well, literally wrap mis- his arms around you and bite your neck. The deer misread that friendship. He did. I thought they were pals, bro. Oh, uh, I think they're ripping apart. They're ripping apart a wolf here. Earth. Oh. Yeah, you got no chance. The bears okay. just bowled over like, wait, I'm taking this. I'm taking yeah, I know. This it's, like, it's like, fuck you both. The, I, I got to eat. And they don't even want to, they ain't even trying to attack it. No. Look, like, at that. Look at that fucking whole moose, dude. It's just dragging I'm, this moose away. I'm more, I'm, more, I'm more agile than a moose. <laughs> but look at the size of it. The bear's like, I don't give a shit. Oh, no, it's just standing up now like, fuck yeah. this. I'm going to take it. Anyway, fuck. That's a nightmare. There's no other. I, there's no worse nightmare. I don't give a fuck. Bear is the worst thing. I couldn't think of a shark, worse way to die. Shark. I'd rather. I'd rather be chased by a bear than chased by a shark. That terrify the fuck out of me. I'm not good fi- in water. I'm not good fi- in water. I, mean... I feel like I'd find a giant octopus more scary than a shark. Oh mate, yeah, like they're horrible. They're horrible. Water. Forget it. At least I can like, see a bear. I'm like, okay, I can take all this. those fucking little suckers. <laughs> imagine, imagine you're treading water and you know something's coming from underneath. Oh, but, I said, that. but I said part of the caveat was I had to be able to see the thing. Yeah. All like, right. Just, imagine. All right. Imagine you're treading water and you look down. And there's a great white coming up at you. That's better. <laughs> a, a great, a great white is terrifying that's as well. Pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> I just oh feel good, like... I can. Oh good, I can see it. Excellent. No, no. I, I my thought process is, I want to die the fastest way possible. And so I you think, don't think there's any hope? No, I think the bear is going to take its time eating your legs and eating your stomach, and you're going to live through half that shit while just eating you. 
Whereas I think the alligator will twist you to death underwater until you're dead. See, yeah, Ben's, Ben's, on, so Ben's optimistic and thinking he can survive. <laughs> it, well, <laughs> it's, survive. It's part, I have to be optimistic a little bit, right? Survival. He's, he's like, I can outrun the thing. I, I know for a fact in wartime, I'm fucked. I think, I think I'm fucked both ways, yeah. but I think I'm less fucked on land because at least my legs, I can run. I can't swim for yeah, shit. Yeah, but I think you, while you're running, you're terrified. So it's just prolonging. You're the inevitable. You know how fast you're, I can run? I can not run fast. With, not I, fast with a bear. bear. You know how fast I can dodge? <laughs> Real fast. <laughs> a bear wouldn't even go down if you hit it with a wrench. It would literally survive. No, it would just be it, like... It would just, it'd just go... Yeah. <laughs> would you rather have a trans son or a trans daughter? Trans daughter, trans son. Uh, what's your reason? Well, because if I have a trans daughter, that means it was a boy. Uh, yeah, yeah, but so then he cut his dick off, and you're like, ah, oh, you oh, wait, yeah, that's right. You're like, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, but if you had a daughter, that means she just filled her hole in and put a dick on. Yeah, be like, oh, you got a dick now, it's great, right? Look, we. <laughs> You know how much fun I have my son when I go to Bob and Lego? Yeah, yeah, okay, PC. okay, yeah, you're, you're right. I, I agree. I agree, I agree. I'd rather, I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather have a daughter that transitioned to a son. Yeah, I think like... Jane's still thinking about it. <laughs> well, babe, I'll probably stay out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if someone stole your dog? What the fuck? I would kill so... someone. If someone steals your dog, you find them and you break their would, neck. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, last question. If someone, if someone steals my dog, they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, your dog, dog, your dog will kill them. Yeah. Exactly, they're in trouble. <laughs> the, dog, the dog will handle the business. It's fine. Uh, what would you rather for $1 billion? Take high-dose aromatase inhibitors every single day of the year and no TRT allowed or, or any other antigens or... Would you rather take two grams of Tren Ace and no other anabolics every week for the whole year? I'd rather take the, sec trend. the second. I'd rather yeah. take Tren. Two grams of Tren for sure. I'll, I'll take the Tren and I'll take a shitload of a snack and hope that I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, think about how bad you would feel on the the, the aromatase inhibitors would yeah. fuck you so much more. Wait. I swear they would. No, what? Ben, I don't care. I'd rather be aggressive and angry. Than, yeah, then depressed and like you wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to sleep. You wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't shit, you wouldn't be to, you'd be, yeah, but you'd be productive. Yeah, but if I took a high you, dose... For, it's it, perfect for business. Yeah. <laughs> if I took high-dose AIs and no test, I would be in bed all fucking yeah, day long. listen, this ain't even just AIs. He said high-dose AIs. Yeah. We'll define that, though, because he gave a definition of... Fine. Like, gave... Fine. Five electro a day. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> You're being stupid now. Five well, litre a day is enough for you to like to say no more. That's equal to saying two grams of test uh, trend a week. Two grams of trend. I don't know. I honestly have never heard of anyone taking two grams of trend. I wouldn't be surprised if someone's tried it, man. I'm sure they have. Yeah. There's someone listening to this podcast as soon as it's out who's injecting their fifth shot of trend in the week. <laughs> of 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 it'd be hours to be it'd have to be what if it's their fifth shot and they're trying to do what two grams a week. That'd be five hundred milligrams. I, no, I've never 400. seen. I've never seen or heard anyone over a thousand milligrams of. Trend. I've seen someone take sixteen hundred. What sixteen hundred? I've seen on someone Ooh. cycle sixteen hundred. What? What the? How does that person live? I don't know how they're still here. <laughs> I think that the highest I went was what did I say eight eight hundred. Mine was six hundred because I did because I. I was doing yeah. a shot. I was doing a shot every other day. So one week would be six, one week would be eight. So average yeah, seven hundred. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. average seven hundred. Yeah, that's the most I took, and I was fucking like uh. aggr aggressive as fuck. I couldn't sleep, sweating yeah. all the time. I mean, imagine fucking double that, like, and among other, among, for, and among other things, for yeah. a year, for, for a, a year. year. Yeah, but listen, I remember one letro a day and how that felt. Oh, it's awful. There's no fucking way. I, I would rather be crazy on trend than yeah. But take... when you took that electro, that was at the end of a contest diet. Ben, and everything still, else man, ben, still. Well. Ben. you know what that's like, Ben. That shit. Five electro. I'm not day. saying. Yeah, I'm not saying. And anymore. you can't take any tests to like counter it. You're literally like, you've crashed your test, and you've you're taking five electro. You'd be suicidal. You're basically super suppressed. Okay, and last, depressed. 
Last question. Do you think you can eat 20 large Dairy Queen blizzards in one day? I don't know what they are. I'm sure they're just like Sunday. It's like a Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. I'll smash a Sunday. I still still get questions about the chicken nugget challenge. (laughs) I know. When are we going to do that, James? I know. I know. We should have done it at the Arnold, but you you were busy. I was busy. Why don't we? If it's, uh, a, if it's an ice cream challenge, I'm pretty confident on it. Yeah, Ben's do, pretty I, good. I, Ben's pretty good. I, I'm, I'm going to do the ice cream as well. We'll do that. Mm-hmm. This is a this is a blizzard. Twenty of them, then, yeah. no problem. No problem. They're piece of piss. Look at them. The only thing I'd have to the only thing I'd have to worry about is getting brain, brain freeze. freeze. Yeah, brain freeze. Slow, slowing me down a little. Wait, bit. Wait, this is this is this is a large. This is a large. Oh, that's different. Twenty of those. Yeah, twenty of them is quite hard. I reckon like you'd get ten. To 10, 10 like, oh my god. I think I can do. I think I could do twenty of these in a whole day. Imagine your oh, shit the oh, next day. day. Oh, if it's a whole no, day, easily. In a day, yes. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, in a day. You, you could do There's, thirty of them the, in a whole day. Hey, what's the calorie count on one of the last? Nine sixty. Nine sixty. Oh, then yeah, it's a top of Ben and Jerry's. I'm pretty sure. Gotta be more than that. No man, two Dairy Queen Blizzard. Tri- Wait, what the fuck? Let's see here. Wait. Yeah, but that's a normal medium. That's, that's a medium. A medium. One medium. Oh yeah, it's more. It's more. Uh, Dairy, Dairy Queen, Queen nutrition facts. What does it eat? Oh, chicken. What the fuck is this? Get out of here, man. I I say go, down. go down. Go down. Blizzard. Yeah, okay. Large. Large, large. 970. 970. 970. Oh, that's not that bad. Unless you get the chocolate extreme and it's at 1120. Yeah, I had a little yeah, bit more. You would get it. You definitely get the chocolate extreme. Don't. I still ain't tried it. Cookie dough. Okay. Yeah, I'd go cookie dough. Oh, wait. Here's a large. 1340. It's, 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 oh, yeah. All right. So all right. basically, I could do the 20,000 calorie challenge. Again. Just by didn't. Yeah. Just, just eat 20 of these. Yeah. Do they have a Dairy Queen in uh, Windsor? Yeah. Oh, imagine that, you're that, awesome that, the next day. That then sounds... I come up in your Pro, then let's do that. It sounds a lot easier than I think it is, though, man. The New York Pro is May, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Are you going, May, James? May, well, May, what's the date? May the... 20th. 13th. 20th, no, no. I should... 20th. 20th. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be out there more, so maybe. Well, listen, because me and Ben are going to see... Well, Ben's going to be in Pittsburgh for Samson's guest posing. I got my show that weekend, so I won't be there. Yeah, no, I'm not. I know I'm not. I'm not I'm not going to it. Oh, you're not going to Pittsburgh? No, I'm gonna go straight to New York on the Okay. Tuesday. So Samson's guest posing at the Pittsburgh Pro. Yep. And then he's gonna go straight to New York from there. Me and Ben are gonna meet him in New York on a Sunday. Ah, uh, okay. And we're gonna stay in New York for the week and then watch the New York Pro. I'll try and get over. You and then come. we're going to go to Canada. Then yeah, we're but, going you back should, to Canada. but you should let us know if you're coming for sure, because then we can get like a bigger Airbnb and make sure you have room. Mm. Okay. All right. Fuck, that'd be sweet. Yeah, Den- Denise, and, uh, Denise and Marlena are coming, so bring Yannick over and then we'll... Yannick will be uh, working uh, again in Norway, so I'll be just freewheeling oh, myself. Sweet. Don't okay, don't, don't bring Yannick. Uh, don't bring Denise. Just let's make it a boy's trip. I have to bring Denise. It's a part... They've already arranged it. Mm. They're bringing Phoenix. She's bringing Phoenix to the New York Pro. Really? And then, yeah. And then after, they're going to come back to Texas, and I'm going to come to Canada with you. And we're going to. Oh, go that's the boy. That's the boys' time. Right. That's the boys' bit. In... So fuck it, just come to Canada then. Well, how long are you in Canada for, Ben? I'm, I haven't decided yet. It's not been mm. probably confirmed. four, probably four or five days. All right. Yeah, at least at least four or five days. And that'll be May as well. That's uh, May. Yeah, the last week in May. Really? Uh, uh, yeah, probably the last week in May or twenty first... the twenty first, twenty second, twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fifth. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll try to sort something out then. I could try. I could teach you how to ride a motorcycle then. Good luck. I'll write off your motorcycle. <laughs> Wait, we literally this isn't a podcast James, anymore. You, you, James James, James writes off who I'd be on his motorcycle. <laughs> Can oh, I uh, um before you, before you sign out? Yeah, and tell everyone to piss off. You and I guarantee you're going to delete this, but I want to give like a you a pat on the back for what? Which you're gonna... Again, you can delete this if you want, but it's don't cry. Something... Ben, I can see it's, 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 something, it's, something, it's something that Fuad did that no one will know about, or no one will see or talk about unless I say it. But oh. Samsung winning the Arnold in these contracts is due to get a certain bonus within that contract for placing. He has placings for like first to third in the Arnold and first to third in the Olympia. Well, Brad honored that, but then increased it because he did so well, just out of the kindness of his heart to bump it up and near enough doubled what the bonus should have been. And that's the kind of shit that people don't, he would never See. tell anyone that. So I, I'm putting it out there because I think that's the kind of man he is. And I respect He's an honor- that a lot. honorable man. And he Thank looks you, after man. his people, he looks after his family. The boys. I, thank you. I appreciate that. Listen, I, I feel like Samson deserves it. He works really, really fucking hard. 
And uh, I think more so than he works hard, I think he really cares about the company. He does. He like does. he really, he really cares about the company. Like I think he posted. Yeah, he absolutely, he absolutely cares. I think he posted something one day. He posted the trophy, and he was like, "This is a hostile trophy," or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He put all the like, stuff on it. I'm like, "This is crazy." So anyway, thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. Um, but Samson deserves it, so it's all good. That's hundred percent. Um, okay, boys. Uh, James, I'm glad we got to catch up, man. We haven't talked. Yeah, about I have as well. We nearly got it wrong again, didn't we? Time wise. I know. Fuck. I don't know why I keep getting the time wrong. He's like, yeah, seven your time. I was like, sweet. And it was like 6.05. And he's like, you, here's the link. I was like, I'll be home in 10. I got caught in traffic. I was like, fuck. But yeah, we, we kind of made it. Are you coming next week? Next week. Are you coming on next week, the podcast? Oh, yeah, I'm around, man. I'm here with my microphone. I'll be here. I'll just stay in the seat till next week. It looks like a dildo. <laughs> Samson. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, we'll leave it there. We'll see, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you later. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.